We're starting. We're, we're live. We're, we're live. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, you guys? I'm still adjusting my computer here in front of me to make sure the picture's just right. You see, you see all the hair I can possibly show off. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Welcome to Monday, February the 19th, 2018. A date that will live in infamy uh, because I'm so close to 1,000 subscribers and I got to have them today. This is it. Oh, what a day I've had today. Just been scrambling like crazy. And I've got my, I got a bunch of viewers who are already writing me. They're already watching. <laughs> ah, this is fantastic. Welcome to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. If you've never been here before, well, you're in for a good time because we have a lot of fun on this channel. Uh, every day, Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern, I'm live streaming on my YouTube channel talking about cruise ships, cruise ship vacations, cruise ship deals, news, updates, developments. Fist fights. We talk about it all. And occasionally our viewers talk to each other and they try to make dates with each other. And we just are up to all kinds of shenanigans here. Um, so if you've never been here, welcome to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you'd like, sign in. Uh, just tell me where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Make me jealous because I can tell you right now, here in Creston, BC, where I am, I'm three miles north of the border from Idaho. It's just over there. You can I can see America from my house, literally. Uh, and it's a gorgeous sunny day. You can tell how sunny the day is today by how shiny this half of my head is and how dark this half of my head is. You see the shadow there on my face? That's from a light over here. I got a, you know, just a kind of a lamp to try to help even things out. It doesn't work too well. But as the afternoon wears on, as this sun is slowly fading behind me, this light over here starts to take over. It's it's a kooky thing every day, but in the summertime, it'll be daylight all the time. But anyway, here in Creston, we got a foot of snow on Friday, Saturday at least. And we got cold. And right now, it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We were down, we were 10 above Fahrenheit this morning. And around here, that's cool because we're kind of used to sort of that uh, Spokane, Seattle weather. We're kind of in the uh, 30s and 40s in the winter time and we get snow but it's wet snow and it just melts when it lands on the uh, street and it'll accumulate on the lawn from time to time but as we get into late february which we are now and into march the sun's angle starts to rise and it burns it all off and so even now uh, we're getting some meltage on the street but not on the lawn and my driveway is barely moving and budging at all so anyway that's what's happening here so i hope you guys had a great weekend i hope you've had a um, Good couple of days off. I, I think you've got a holiday today. Don't you have President's Day today down there uh, in the U.S.? Uh, my American uh, friends that, I'm, that are watching me, most of my viewers are Americans. Forgive me. I have Canadian viewers. I have U.K. viewers. I've got Australians. i got Aussies watching. i got New Zealanders watching. I, I got them from all over the Caribbean. I've got them from uh, around the world. It's unbelievable. I have South African viewers. I have viewers uh, from South America. It's wonderful. And I welcome all of you to the channel. And I love it when you sign in and tell me how you're doing. And then we'll talk cruise ships and everything else. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. I got to tell you, uh, I have been scrambling uh, since last Saturday and, and, well, for the last month now. You regulars, you're sick and tired of me talking about this. I'm sure you are. I've tried to keep it as light as possible and as entertaining as possible. But I, I can't wait to stop talking about this. Up until... Uh, a month ago, everything was great. <laughs> my channel was growing. I was getting new subscribers all the time. My view numbers were growing. Everything's fantastic. I was a monetized YouTuber, looking forward to growing my numbers up and starting to get some income from the advertising and some other things that'll happen as I grow my subscriber base. But then YouTube, they changed the rules. And uh, they decided uh, around the 19th, 20th of January, they said, we don't want to. We're not going to. We're not going to do what we used to do before. Uh, all you channels out there, everyone is going to be reevaluated. We're changing everything. And um, and me, I was monetized back in October when I started this channel back in August. By October, I was monetized, and I'm sitting here with 200 and some odd subscribers. I'm going, oh, oh, what does this mean to me? And what it meant was two new plateaus of performance had to be met before you could be monetized. And there's no grandfathering on the monetization. So even if you're monetized now, doesn't matter. By Feb 20, tomorrow, is the new drop dead date. And if you don't have these parameters that we are now setting 
you're out. Even though you're in, you're out. And I am halfway in and halfway out. <laughs> the way I'm in is view time. You need 4,000 hours of view time in the last 12 months from February the 20th backwards to stay in. I have that. I have over 11,000 hours of view time. Thanks to all you people who are watching. You're wonderful. I love it. Uh, so that's not the problem. The problem is you also have to have a thousand subscribers. A thousand. That makes every small YouTuber just panic because if you're sitting at 100, 200 subscribers, now you're looking at 1,000, you're going, oh, how am I going to get? It's going to take me forever to get to 1,000. Well, it took me four months to get to 100. It took me three weeks to get to another 100. And by the time they dropped the bomb on us, I was about 220, maybe 240. So I put the word out to all of you people out there, and oh, my God, did you respond? It's been wonderful. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, as of Saturday afternoon, when I was doing this live stream the last time, I was at about two, 823 subscribers, a mere 167 away <laughs> on Saturday afternoon from making it. And uh, Sunday comes around, and I'm in, the, I'm in the high 800s. Dinner time last night, 900. I hit 900 at dinner time last night, my time. Uh, this morning I wake up. 910, 912. Ooh, we're going, we're going. Last time I looked, 949. 51 away from the magic number. But I found out today that this is the de this is the last day. It, it, tomorrow doesn't count. Whatever I do tomorrow is after the deadline. I have to hit a thousand tonight. Excuse me, I dropped my page. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I thought about that and I thought, well, I could just sit here on the couch and give up. And just kind of, you know, limp in with 930 subscribers. And then I'll get 1,000 in the next two or three days. And I'll reapply for monetization. And I, then I got mad. <laughs> I, I, became, I became like those passengers on the uh, Carnival uh, uh, Legend cruise ship in Australia. Got angry. <laughs> and I thought, this isn't fair. <laughs> so I thought, why not? Give it a shot and pull out all the stops today and just hit Twitter like you've never hit Twitter before. Hit Facebook and tell the world what's going on. Go on to Instagram and do what you can there. And then I decided this morning I made a video, which you may have noticed. Uh, it was a, it's a new video about all the new cruise ships that are coming out. So I, I loaded that up this morning. That's what I did between 4 and 7 this morning because I can't sleep. And now... Uh, um, seven o'clock i decided okay that's it i'm i'm going aggressive and so today i did a video on uh i did a live already on youtube and a lot of you have seen it and it's it's basically begging for subscribers <laughs> and at the time i started i needed 71 i was at 929 and i needed 71 subscribers and i've changed the title now like five times because every time three or four more subscribers comes in i up the, the amount and so the last time i think I was asking for 54 or 56 subscribers now i need 49, 51? Yeah, if I'm at 949, I need 51. So I'll have to redo that after this fellow cast again. But I'll tell you, folks, I'm, as you know, I'm begging anyone, if, you, if any of you are watching this for the first time and you're not a subscriber of my channel, oh, could you do me a favor and just hit the subscribe button there or there and come on board the channel? It's free. There's no charge to you. Uh, and there's no obligation. <laughs> If you'd like to watch the channel, that'd be great. <laughs> I'd prefer subscribers that watch. And generally, my subscribers do watch because they comment and they talk to me. And I thank you very much for that. So if you know of someone that's going on a cruise, thinking of a cruise, might be going on a cruise, was on a cruise five years ago, but is kind of thinking of a cruise next year. And they're kind of, well, there's a lot of changes. So it's been going on. They should know what's going on. They should watch this guy. And they should be talking to us as uh, viewers here as to what's going on in the cruise business because it's changing like crazy and so they should become a subscriber of this channel get a hold of these people send them a uh, text share my video that i did earlier today or the one about the new ships or the one i did a week ago talking about uh, going live all the time whatever you got to do get in front of them and say you got to subscribe to bruce today help them get over a thousand subscribers you're doing all of us a favor that would be great <laughs> i'll take anything i can get Okay, that's enough of that. Let's talk about what's going on. Who's here? <laughs> and let's start with that. Steve Bartley started off by texting a minute before I went live. He's saying four YouTube travel channels I watch had live feeds this weekend. Yours was the best. I got my son to subscribe. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can tell you right now, you're watching four live feeds out there. 
Yeah, those three others, they all have over a thousand subscribers. <laughs> They're relaxing. They're going like this. Going, yeah, we got our 7,000, 20,000 subscribers. We got our 50,000 subscribers. No panic here in our house. We've been doing this for five years. But Bruce over in Creston with traveling with Bruce, he's the newbie. And he's the desperado. He's the guy who's got to get a thousand right now. <laughs> so I'm working it, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, George McGrower is here, 83 degrees, partly a little bit cloudy in the villages. I'm sorry to hear that, George, but 83 degrees, you're making me jealous. You're killing me, George. Wes Morrison's here. Hi, Bruce. Uh, it's 78 in overcast in New Braunfels, Texas. What an awesome game of curling. Canada played well but fell short against the USA. I tell you, we watch curling up here all the time. You, know, you think we're watching paint dry, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, Pamela Jordan, hi, Bruce, 57 degrees and cloudy here in Iva. South Carolina, beautiful country. Thanks, Pamela. Welcome back. Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce from Chile Ventura. It's chilly, but it's chilly er here. Oh my gosh. Scott Durward is here. Wow, that's amazing how many subscribers you've gotten recently. I missed the last uh, last couple of streams. Congratulations. One degree Fahrenheit and snow in Haber, Montana. Haber gold, just like us. Yeah, uh, but it's wide open prairie there too. Betsy Lane is here. Uh, hello, plus six Celsius in Drizzle. Hey, Betsy, how you doing? I don't know if you've been here before. If you have, welcome back. You've never been here before. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my live stream. It's great to have you. Uh, Gailey is here. Hi, Bruce. Eight degrees Celsius and damp here in England. Welcome back, Gailey. I haven't seen you for a while. Welcome back to the channel. Gina Welts. Uh, Gina Welts Hulse is here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gina. How you doing? You're a newbie. I think you joined just past weekend. And I welcome you to the channel. Welcome to the live stream today. Pamela Jordan, 949 on the home stretch. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's do it. Oh, yeah, almost there, she says. Northern California has sun and only a high 53 degrees today. Yeah, you got some of what we got, but we got it worse than you. Sorry to say. Jeffrey Stower is here. Jacksonville, Florida, 82 degrees. Jeffrey, you're killing me. Way to go, pal. You are in uh, you're in heaven down there. It's fantastic. Way to go. Sylvan Forrest is here. Hi, Bruce. We reached 82 degrees Fahrenheit here in Delray Beach, Florida. It's my favorite time of day. Cruise chat, rum and coke and a cigar every day <laughs> love it welcome back sylvan it's fantastic betsy lane hey today is family day in ontario that's right we had family day last monday that was our holiday and in the u.s i believe it's president's day so uh we're you know we get that one day off kind of in staggered uh, times here in canada i think we're going to start coordinating ourselves so i know that with this province british columbia and our neighbors alberta we were staggered and next year we're the same time we're gonna have the same monday off every year going forward We'll make it easier for folks who are planning holidays, let me tell you. Sherman Mercer, 78 degrees here at Angleton, Texas. Welcome back, Sherman. Nice to have you. Crash 3X, hi, 4 degrees. She's in Ottawa, Ontario. She's my number one. Welcome back, Crash. Doreen Chapman, hi, everybody. Plus three here. Oh, man, that's that's not, that's not good, but it's better than what we got. We're minus six Celsius, about 20 Fahrenheit. Richard Goromaski saying, hey, Bruce, happy President's Day. Oh, sorry, happy Canada. Good day. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, we had our holiday last weekend, last Monday. You got yours this one. Welcome back, sir. The PJ Drayton is here, 26 in Omaha. Freezing sleet has made driving a slippery mess. We were almost 60 yesterday. It's crazy. Isn't that funny? You're right in that, you're right in that zone, aren't you? You go from great to crappy, just depending on the Arctic front and storm systems. It's just it's it's entertaining, isn't it? Charles Jordan, hi, Bruce. Hey, Charles, how you doing? Richard Kormaski, Philly will be 75 Tuesday after snow, after Saturday night. Go figure, yeah. <coughs> it's that time of year now. We get these systems and it just goes crazy. Carolyn Armstrong is here. Good morning, Bruce. Or is it afternoon there? Here's hoping you've had at least 50 more subscribers by your deadline. Their subs, their subs is their gain and yours, of course. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for saying that. Yeah, we're within 50 51. Uh, I'm just hoping we get a late push here and we can put us over the top. I'm just dreading the thought that I'm going to be 10 short. I'm just dreading that because uh, the computer just cuts you off. They don't care. And then I have to go through this whole damn application process and uh, I could be down a month uh, for monetization. It might be a month before I get back in because they're going to be overwhelmed, just overwhelmed with applications. There's millions of channels like mine, millions in this zone of acceptance and rejection. Uh, I'm just praying I'm not one of those that has to scramble. We'll see. We're, we're working it, and we're putting the word out. I know. Pamela Jordan, I have put it out all over my Facebook friends and family. I hope it works. Thank you, Pamela. I can't thank you enough for that. I really appreciate it. It only takes a few of us. We have 950 now. 
if we could get one in 20 of us to find a friend, a relative, a brother, a sister, someone that owes you, <laughs> you know something about somebody that they don't want out in the public. <laughs> This is your chance to say, you remember that time we were in Vegas together and we promised that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, I figured out a way to ensure that what happened in Vegas, you remember like three, four months ago, is going to stay in Vegas. If you just do one little thing, you just all you got to do is just go find Traveling with Bruce on YouTube. That's all you got to do. And just click the subscribe button. You might want to watch him. He's kind of fun. But I'm telling you, to keep that little secret a secret, maybe we need to make have an understanding. Like, I understand the fact that you're not subscribed and you should be, you know. <laughs> Just trying to help you out, folks. Trying to figure out ways to motivate you. We'll see what we can do. I'm doing everything I can from here. Sylvan Forrest, everybody, email all your friends with a link to this chat and tell them to subscribe by midnight Eastern. Don't ask nicely. Tell them. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvan. <laughs> Uh, Kaylee has to say, hi, everybody. Bruce, I was not impressed with the Carnival Vista on our Caribbean cruise. The food was diabolical, not much choice, and difficult to reach because of the glass on the buffet side. Isn't that something? You're on the Vista ship. That's the Vista class. That's the newest class of Carnival ship that they're building now. They're, they just, they're bringing out the Horizon, uh, what, a few months from now? And it's another Vista class ship. So what the heck's going on with that? That's not very good. Uh, yikes. Uh, AJ Walsh. Hi, Bruce. Hi, AJ. How you doing? Welcome back. Gina Wells is saying, yes, I joined you several days ago. That's right, Gina. I remember. I saw you. That's fantastic. Richard Koromansky, my travel agent, gave me a gift today for our Monday cruise. <coughs> free, din free dinner <coughs> Excuse me, at the steakhouse on Princess and $75 spending cash. What a sweet person. We all should have travel agents like that, shouldn't we? Isn't that nice? That's fantastic. AJ Walsh, 48 degrees in Las Vegas today. Burr, we're in the cold front. Yeah, you got, you're getting the leading edge of what we got because we've got the Arctic air from the north that came down, pushed our 40-degree weather to you, and uh, you got it. And now I've got this Arctic air because I'm sitting here at 10 at night and 20 for the high today, and it's glorious sunshine today. Just glorious. It looks like it's 70 degrees out there. It's not 70 degrees out there. It's unbelievable. Uh, Charles Jordan, 36, watching, and only 16. What's up? Come on, give Bruce a thumbs up if you're watching. Well, if you could, if you could, folks, give me a thumbs up today on my video. I'd appreciate that. I love it. Uh, YouTube keeps track of these things. These are like indicators, and it shows activity. And more activity means YouTube pushes the video more. They, they show off all my videos to more suggested videos, you know, that kind of, oh yeah, if you can give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. Thanks, so Charles, yeah, he does it every day, I'm not sure. Tina Old Odell, Tina Odell is here, 51 and raining in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm sorry to hear about the rain, but I'm glad you got at least 51 degrees, because a lot of folks up here, we're not getting it, and you are at least, so hang on. Uh, I hope it doesn't turn to freezing rain. Just cross our fingers for you, PJ, uh, for Tina. Uh, PJ Drayton saying, just got my daughter, Megan, to subscribe. You now have two of us from Omaha. I'm taking over Omaha. That's it. I'm I'm dominating the YouTube and, and the internet in Omaha. I know I've got two from Chicago. I have two people from Chicago. I know I own that town. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Dylan LaRue is here, 54 and cloudy, but only a week to go till my cruise. Dylan, you just, just hang in there. Just hang on a little longer. It's going to happen, buddy. It's going to happen. Henderson, Nevada. I got a friend here in, in Las Vegas. Fantastic. Welcome, you guys from Nevada. I, I, I own Nevada. <laughs> Elizabeth Breen is here. Hi, Bruce. My daughter subscribed. She loves cruise videos. You see, this, this is great. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Elizabeth. Good job. Pamela Jordan, 959, Bruce. 959. Well, that means I've got 41 to go. This is fantastic. Pamela Jordan, we got this. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Lam Lam Lamera is here. Hey, Bruce. Paula from Big Bear, California. 25 degrees and snowing here. Hope you get your subscribers. Me too. We're praying. We're pushing everywhere we can. All of us are contacting everybody we can contact. I think we got people that are mad at us. <laughs> They're getting off the phone and going, geez, 
Will you stop bothering me about this guy traveling with Bruce? Jeez, okay, I'll, I'll subscribe. Fine, I'll do it. Then they watch. And then they kind of they sometimes like what they're seeing. Not bad. Thank you so much. Fantastic, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Crash 3X, 30 more to go, Bruce. Yes, George McCrower. Bruce, about your reaction to criticism of carnival food. When was carnival food ever described or considered to be haute cuisine? You know, folks, we've, I think we touched on this a little bit before. Um, I talk to a friend of mine often about cruising. I have a good buddy of mine that I talk to about it. And we keep we keep bringing this subject up. This this comes up all the time about uh, is cruise ship food not as good as it used to be from 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? I think yes. I think cruise ship food today is much more middle of the road. And I'm talking about the buffet for sure. For sure, I'm talking about the buffet. But then again, I've been to Las Vegas and my one of my favorite buffets in Las Vegas is the Bellagio. And I used to really enjoy the Bellagio buffet in the 90s when Steve Wynn kind of built it. The original, originally, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm right on that uh, assumption. Bellagio is about 20 years old now, give or take. Uh, and I've been to the Caesar uh, buffet. This is again in the 80s and the 90s. Fantastic food. But across the street from Caesar's used to be the Holiday Inn. The, uh, the Holiday Inn, uh, the riverboat, or it looked like a steamboat type uh, hotel. It's not there anymore. Or if it is, it's run by somebody else. Anyway, they had a buffet, and it was the old $4.99 buffet. You remember those prices? And it was just what you expect for $4.99. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, fries, gravy, soggy vegetables, some roast beef that the guy would cut at the end. You know, $4.99 buffet, Vegas, 1980s. But it was fine. But if you wanted to go for a real premium buffet, the first time I saw what I thought was a Las Vegas primo buffet was at Steve Wynn's uh, Bellagio. And uh, the hotel is a five-star hotel. The casino floor was sumptuous. They, of course, they shot Oceans 11, 12, 13, you know, did all those Oceans movies there. Great place. But over, over the years, we know what's been happening in Las Vegas. Like everywhere else, the quality is going down. The prices are going up. And you want to go to the Bellagio Buffet. It's still nice. And I think it's pretty well just as good as it's always been what is it now 50 bucks is it now 49.95 to get in there um that's a lot of money for a buffet even as fancy as it is you're kind of pushing the envelope and here on the cruise ship side i'm kind of wondering is that what has that been happening too are we now in a situation where cruise ship buffets are becoming dominated by the dreaded bean counter the accountant back at head office and they're grinding those chefs like this and they're grinding a dime a plate more profit from the buffet and that means you either buy cheaper which is the buying department the pu pur procurement procurement department they buy cheaper because they're buying in bulk and if you've got a 5000 passenger cruise ship or a 4000 passenger cruise ship you have the ability to say to the egg guy the milk guy the butter supplier the beef supplier you got four of them you got bids who's going to sell us um you know hamburger and chicken and vegetables at the best price and we're putting out for a tender for the month of january we've got 25 cruise ships we're going to have you know 850,000 passengers, whatever the number is, 3 million passengers, whatever the number is, on our ships. We need this many eggs, this many pounds of butter, this much margarine, this much sugar, this much flour. Who's giving us the best deal? And these suppliers are sharpening their pencils to get the deal, but the cruise line is saying, no, no, no we don't want, we don't want the, uh, we don't want the, 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 you know, double XL size eggs, the double extra size. No, we just want a large, we want large eggs. We'll go with medium eggs. Uh, what kind of deal can you make us now? Can you give 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 us four cents a dozen off? Another penny a dozen? A tenth of a penny a dozen? I mean, it gets to the point where the accountant is sharpening the pencil to the point where it's a deadly instrument. And these cruise ships are just, mm, mm, mm. they're becoming more efficient, but they're cutting corners. And I sense it. I've seen it. I've tasted it. I swear by it. I'm sure of it. That cruising from 2008, when I started, to 2017-18 to now, 
I think the standards are getting lower. What do you folks think? I think that's what's happening. Here on this Carnival cruise, she's she's not happy with the quality of the food on the Carnival buffet. Not happy at all. And uh, is she quiet about it? No. She's going to share it, and she has the, every right to share it. And she's letting us know, and we're going to tell the world about it. And as if Carnival hasn't got enough problems, failing CDC surprise inspections, number one, they fa failed four of those in a month. They got the uh, the uh, people falling off the ship mysteriously in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Then we have this uh, wine bottle over the head of a guy in, cutting in line on a booze cruise. And then we have the Mealy last weekend in Australia. Carnival doesn't need this. And what it really would want to have its act together on is the little things that make the rest of us happy because 99.9% .9 of us aren't involved in these out of this world events like fist fights and wine bottles smashing over the head and that kind of stuff. We're in, we go on a cruise and we're spending our hard earned money going on a cruise maybe once a year, maybe twice, maybe once every two years, maybe once every five years and we're saving our pennies to to crank up enough cash to be able to do this and what do we what do we want do we want to come home and complain about the lousy food on the cruise ship when we thought and were promised and were led to believe that we're on the latest generation of carnival cruise ship four thousand passengers it's got the havana club in the back it's got the the the, the neat water slides it's got all these add-ons they're trying harder they're trying hard to get our dollar and we're going to come home not very happy with the quality of the food. What the heck is that all about? That's not good. That's, you know, is this passenger ever going to be on that cruise ship again? That line? Maybe not. And uh, this is, you know, I ask, hmm, what is this all about? Um, not, not good. Um, <laughs> let's see what we got here. Uh, I got to go back to my message because it's been coming in so fast. I'm <laughs> losing messages. Sorry, folks. Okay, Big Bear. Got the Big Bear. Got George. And 960, Darina, saying, ha ha, yes. Hang on, Bruce. Daughter and granddaughter, subscribe tonight. Okay, we got some more coming. Crossing everything. Hope you hit 1,000, Belinda says. Thanks, Linda. Uh, Belinda, I'm crossing everything, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support, Belinda. Gina Wells Holtz just shared your channel on Facebook. Hope that helps. It will. Uh, Elizabeth Reed, I can cook very well, so cruise ship food does nothing for me. I go for the shows, comedy, fancy drinks, sun, and music. Way to go, Elizabeth. Crash 3X, my sister thinks all main dining room cruise food on most lines, five-star dining. I disagree. It's nice, and I don't have to cook it, but it's nowhere near five-star. Bingo, you got it. Crash X, you're right on it. That's exactly right. Five-star dining was the norm. Five-star was the standard. If you were the White Star Line, you were the Cunard Line, you were P&O Oceana, you were uh, any of these cruise line home lines that I was on in the 1960s, you were on any cruise uh, ocean liner that was worth its salt, you had to have five-star dining because what else were you offering? You were offering them the Atlantic. You had a ship without stabilizers, and we'd be yawing and moving. You had to have dinner. You had to you had to keep them fed, keep them happy. Even on cruises today, we expect that. I, I'm happy to pay more money to get the five star. I'll I'll pay it, but uh, if you're promising quality and then you deliver way less, now you're making people angry. And now they got to say, well, why don't we just stay at a Motel Six in Miami or in Orlando? And we'll drive to Disney World. And then we'll eat at the uh, the burger joint for breakfast, you know, four bucks for the kids and eight bucks for the adults. We'll scrimp and cut corners there. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, you know, share uh, something to eat at, at a fast food thing at Disneyland. That's possible, Disney World, if it's possible. And then for dinner, we won't go up to the fancy restaurant at dinner time. We'll go to, uh, we'll go to Olive Garden. We'll go to, uh, we'll go to the... Um, you know, the lobster place, or we'll go to a steak. We'll go to a family buffet restaurant. We'll eat three star quality food because we're going to screw because that's what we're going to get on a cruise ship anyway. That's what they'll feed us there. And we have no choice in the matter because there's nowhere else to go. We're on a ship. This is what the cruise lines don't want to have happen to them. They're building all these ships. You cannot afford to have people start turning back on going on a cruise because if the standards are falling off, that's going to be a problem. These ships are built for 20, 30 years of service. You can't make or break your, your investment in a cruise ship in one season. You've got to have that ship full for 30 years. You better got to keep that standard up or else. Debbie Emanuel, I agree with buffets on cruise ships today. The great food now seems to be 
at the upcharge restaurants now. And Debbie, you're right. And I tell you, I'm hearing about the upsell restaurants being, in some cases, mediocre too. They're not even five star. And now we're going, well, gee, where is the five star food? We're beginning to find out in some cases, it might only be at the place where you pay a hundred bucks more a meal to get the five star and everything else is four star or worse. This is what is starting to infiltrate into this business and it's going to cost them. It's going to cost them billions if they don't uh, figure this out. Uh, Mark, the lost traveler, 81 in partly cloudy Orlando, six days Norwegian getaway cruise. Mark, welcome back. I saw your video on the packing. Very good. Uh, welcome back, buddy. Richard Kormaski, tip for Bellagio Buffet. When they have a champagne lunch, dinner tip the guy that pours the drink, tip him or her 20 bucks and say, keep it full. Boy, we almost missed our show that night because we had to, we had to nap. <laughs> Well, Richard, you know, you, you know, there's, there's sometimes there's too much of a good thing, <laughs> and uh, yes, you can, you can tip them, and they'll keep it coming. You betcha, they'll take care of you because you're taking care of them. But it might screw up the rest of your plans. <laughs> Very good tip there, Orchard Valley Farms. That's a new subscriber, Orchard Valley Farms. How you doing? Uh, love the show, but let us be secure in Wi-Fi by using a VPN. You made a very good point today. I loved it. Uh, it's in my comment section, folks. You can look it up. I made a real good point about the Wi-Fi. I thought that was a real good tip. Thank you very much. Mark the Lost Traveler, 962. You're almost there. That means we're 38 short. 38 to go, folks. We need 38. Let's make it happen. Scott Batchley, the food is still good, but not like when I started cruising. I think you are right about the bean counters. I'm telling you, it's you know when you're this big, when you become a multi cruise line organization like Carnival, which, you know, they own Hall in America, they own Princess, they own Cunard, they own the Seabourn, they own Ada, they, you know, there's Royal Caribbean, they own Celebrity, they own TUI Cruising. It just goes on and on and on. They have all these divisions and they're publicly traded companies. It's not like you have to answer to you know, old man Fredrickston over here, who's the chairman of the board and owns 58% of the stock. There is no guy that owns 58% of the stock in these companies. These are such big behemoths that the shareholders uh, are scattered out amongst mutual funds, investment funds, investment uh, investors in general, that type of thing. And the employees, there's no one group that runs the show. And so you're actually answering to, as management, your boss are the Wall Street analysts. They're the boss because it's what Wall Street analysts think you're doing, how they think you're doing, that dictates everything. And you can try to ignore these guys and you can try to tell them what, you know, you know cruising and they don't know the cruising, but forget all that. These guys call the shots is if they think that maybe next quarter, 13 weeks from now, when you report your last quarter's results, that you might be one half of one percentage point short of the profit projections they thought you should make. Not what you thought. No, no. What they think you should make. You miss by that much, they'll downgrade your stock. And if they downgrade your stock, Carno, uh, Caribbean, Royal Caribbean stock will go from 130 bucks a share, 80 bucks a share in a week, 50 bucks a share. Every shareholder will be angry. Every mutual fund manager will be PO'd and the phones will be ringing. The emails will light up. And now what's wrong with Royal Caribbean? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Well, there's nothing wrong. They're making all kinds of money. They're making more money than the last quarter, making more money than last year. But they fell short by one half of 1% from certain analysts over in Wall Street because they didn't deliver what the analysts said they should be delivering on. And inside the head office of Royal Caribbean and Carnival and Norwegian, are the bean counters who are telling the chairman of the board and the board of directors and the president of the company and all the guys, uh, so and so at Merrill Lynch thinks we're going to make 440 a share profit this quarter, and if we don't make it, we're in trouble. And if we come in at 438 a share, two cents short, two cents short, we could get a downgrade on our stock, and that means that on the one hand, the shareholders lose a lot of value. Ships are still the ships. But the problem is that Royal Caribbean has got orders for celebrity ships. They've got orders for more of these Carn uh, Royal Caribbean ships. 
They've got orders for their other brands of ships out there. They've got ships that are going into dry dock. They need 100 million to retrofit this one. They need 50 million to retrofit that one. They have capital requirements. They need to go to the bond market and raise money from bonds. The bonds are issued by Wall Street and the bond department goes to the analyst to find out how's this company doing. And the analyst is saying, well, they fell short of last quarter's projections and I'm not sure if they're going to meet this quarter's projections because the management is putting up some squat. The bond guys are going to say, well, they want to raise $2 billion for the next 20 years to build out a couple more ships and they want $5 billion more in six months for the next year's build after that. And the analyst is going, well, you better take a look at the interest rate you're going to charge these guys because uh, they may not be living up to our expectations. Next thing you know, Royal Caribbean is paying 2% more. Doesn't sound like a lot more money, interest, 2%, but on $7 billion, $140 million a year for the next 30 years, add it up. It's unbelievable. A tenth of a percentage point, five one hundredths of a percentage point, it's millions of dollars. So this is the pressure they're under. And so the bean counter is passing it on. He's getting it from the management, who's getting it from the analysts. He's passing it on to the captains. They're passing it on to the hotel operators. The whole ship is under immense pressure to deliver maximum profit per passenger, per meal, per drink, per straw used on that ship. And yet, you come up, you come onto the ship at the pier, and it's 1,300 feet long. It's 18 stories high. It's 200 and something feet wide. It's got 7,000 souls on board with the staff and the passengers. And they've got that thing figured out to a hundredth of a penny on everything they spent. It's unbelievable. So there's the problem. And that's why the food isn't as good anymore. <laughs> that's just one little thing. It's unbelievable. Ah, my goodness. Uh, let me just check here. Um, Sherman Mercer saying, we're going on Valor and taking a really good cook with us. Review of food on Culver Valor, Carnival Valor coming soon. Looking forward to that. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, that's what you get when uh, you're on Carnival. Cheap cruise is a cheap cruise. Doesn't matter what the Carnival ship you're on. Dylan LaRue is saying, oh, never feel safe on a VPN. What's a VPN? I can't wait to see the breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffets on Ruby. V. P.N. Help me, uh, uh, Dylan. I, I'm missing something. D.N. Down to 55 degrees in Pasadena. Still no rain. I think Princess and Holland America food is still great. 55 in Pasadena. Ooh, it's a little cool, but you need rain. You, you sure do need rain. Um, Princess is, has uh, backed off on quality. Uh, Holland America, last time I was on it, was great. Uh, but I'm worried about the little things uh yeah worried but uh yeah hall america still still great cindy bear is here i started a cruise uh in on carnival in 2007 i love their buffet food and dining room food i'm going on carnival glory in may which was which i was on five years ago I expect it to be as good we will see and that's the, the thing cindy we're curious i'm really curious to know is it uh, when you come back tell us has it changed because i've had People that have been on Princess Cruises 10 years ago, then they were on five years ago, then they were on last year, and each time, less, less, less. Little things, just little things, and they're noticing it, and uh, I'm curious about that too. AJ Walsh, my last Carnival Cruise, 2017, the buffet food was horrible, doused with yucky, salty sauces, reusing yesterday's food, question mark. I, 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 I don't know. Gailey S., you're right there, Bruce. My friend and I will not go on Carnival again. I have to say, though, Matt, the cruise director, was out of this world. And that's the shame of it. Uh, you know, part of the ship is great. Uh, the entertainment's great. The pool might have been fantastic. The room was super. Uh, they went out of their way to improve different areas of the experience. Maybe Wi-Fi is much better now than it used to be. Um, you know, all these other things. The port of calls are fine. The ship's great. It's a beautiful vessel. But the food, they've been cutting back on the darn food. And you can taste it. You can see the selection. The selection isn't as good anymore. It's not as exotic anymore. You go to the main dining room, boy, it's kind of like middle of the road type of selections now. Where's the good stuff? Where's the higher premium stuff? It's not there anymore. It's a race to the bottom. Charles Jordan, Orchard Valley Farms. Why do you feel the need for Bruce to have a VPN? I watch a lot of YouTube and uh 
to this date, I've never had a problem with my computer being secure. Oh, that's what they're talking about, the VPN. Well, that yeah, good question. Uh, Cindy Bear, I think you will make 1,000 subscribers. You may need to pop in later tonight and do more tweeting, but I think you're going to make it. I am open, so I'm getting tired. <laughs> Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler saying the Norwegian Epic went from five stars to two and a half stars. Wow. I was on the Epic and uh, there's things I loved about it. There's things I didn't, wasn't all that crazy about. Food quality, I was kind of like, eh, yeah, okay, that's all right. Uh, but then it could be better. Yeah. Uh, Orchard Valley Farms, if you are assessing your bank or personal information, then you need a, VP, a VPV. Otherwise, your information is unencrypted and can be viewed by anyone on the same Wi-Fi. That's his concern. Very good point, Orchard. Uh, really, really interesting. Peter from Australia. Peter Quadling is here. I have two friends who are executive chefs on cruise ships, both looking for shore jobs. And that's something. And, that, and that's something. That's really interesting, Peter. Really interesting. Yeah. Are they being? Are they being? Um, are they being pushed or encouraged to? Uh, not produce the good stuff anymore are they now you know finding that they're just uh producing food that uh you know befits a uh mediocre restaurant is that is that the worry i'm kind of curious why that's very interesting peter would love to know the reason for that sylvan forest i don't care about water slides bumper cars mini golf rock face climbing or rope courses but the food on my plate has got to be prime quality in the main dining room or the buffet and there you go because uh, the reality of life <laughs> is the older the passenger, generally speaking, the more well-to-do they are. And uh, the more well-to-do they are, they can afford the good stuff. And they demand it. And they're paying for it. And so you better give it to them. And if you disappoint a well-to-do cruiser who can pick any cruise line they want, and there's a lot of cruise lines to pick from out there, all of a sudden, you're going to lose their business, and they're going to tell their pals about it because people who are mad and upset and unhappy about the food on a ship, unforgivable. It's the one thing you got to get right. It's the one absolute thing you got to get right. You got to get me from point A to point B. I get that. But the food, forget the pool, forget the hot tub, forget the steam room. The food better be up there or you're in trouble and it's starting to happen i sense it i can feel it uh i just know it uh stephen ducar uh have not been on a cruise in 10 years what can you tell me about food on the carnival glory steve uh i am going to guess and you may notice already on these comments coming in the beauty of this sh this talk show we have uh, my fellow viewers are already telling you what's going to happen. You're, you're going to be maybe not so happy. Um, you may find, Steve, Stephen, you may end up going to the steakhouse and paying 50 bucks each for the, for the dinner. And after dinner's over, you're going to talk to your, your friend, your wife, whomever you're with. You're going to compare notes. You're going to say, hey, listen, eh, this food we had tonight at the steakhouse, um, now that we've had it, is it as good as the food we used to get in the main dining room as part of our fare? Or is it not even that good? And I'm wondering about the second half being the answer. I'm wondering about that. I'm really curious to know. Stephen, you got to tell us. When you get back, you got to let us know what's going on. Uh, I'm wondering about that. Belinda, uh, mom and I are going on Holland America, Noor Dam for the first time soon. I hope the food is good. Belinda, I like your chances. I like your chances a lot that you're going to be happy on Holland America. I'm very confident you're going to love the dining room, the main dining room. Forget the special restaurant. Main dining room has always been good. I've not had complaints from people about the main dining room on Holland America. So I think you're okay. Thanks for the comment very much. Charles Jordan, the bank I use has a secure page, as do most other sites that use your personal information. Here I use, I use no personal information. Well, uh, Again, Charles, you know, it all depends. Some some of us believe in it. Some of us don't. Some of us take extra precautions, and that's what we're getting. Ann Smith, hi, I'm new. Hi, Ann Smith, you're new. Welcome. Subscribe, Warwick, Rhode Island. Welcome from Rhode Island. This is fantastic. Taking first cruise in March. What is some good advice? Uh, what line are you going on? What's the name of your ship? Tell us that if you could. How long and where are you going? <laughs> Caribbean? 
seven days? Royal Caribbean uh, or, or or Norwegian? What what? Let us know, and we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, try to help you out. <clears throat> Welcome and to the channel. This is great. Sean Johnson, thirty four to go. Bruce, sorry to be late. Sean, thirty four to go. It's too many. I need I need subscribers. I need them now. We're running out of time. Oh my goodness, we're crossing our fingers. We're crossing our toes. I'm crossing my nose. Oh, Heather Young, Sunny and sixty two in South Central Kentucky. Welcome, Heather, to the channel today. It's good to have you. Orchard Valley Farm, sixty five here in Indianapolis. Nice. That's, that, I take that in a heartbeat right now. I'll tell you right now, Orchard Valley, I take it. Francis Williams, High Bruce, 77 and cloudy here in Beaumont, Texas. We sail in 54 days to the Bahamas. Fantastic. That is fantastic. Way to go. Oh, my goodness. Um, what do we got here? Uh, Stephen Ducar, 73 in Denton, Texas. Uh, Thomas Arnold, hey, Bruce. Tom from Big Bear, looking good for your thousand. I, I hope you're right. It's still in the 30s. We gotta get we gotta get in the last 10 ASAP. Orchard Valley Farms wish I was in Texas. <laughs> Indianapolis is not as nice as Texas right now. <laughs> Mark, the lost traveler. <clears throat> I'll watch the rest tonight uh, over dinner time. You should be a thousand by the end of the day. Good day to you all. I'm hoping for the best, Mark. We're gonna cross our fingers. You're getting ready for your cruise, buddy. Charles Jordan and Smith, number one. Watch Bruce's YouTube channel next. Do a search on YouTube for the ship you are going to cruise on. There you'll find a lot of information. Absolutely right. Uh, if, if you're going and if you're going on a ship, let's say you're going on the, uh, say you're going on the Eurodam, Holland America Eurodam. You go to YouTube, you type in Eurodam or Holland America Eurodam. You'll see all kinds of videos of people who were on the Eurodam, and they'll tell you what they liked about the ship, what they didn't like about the ship, what they were surprised about at the ship. You can even enter, in some cases, the room number you're going to be on. If you know your room number on the ship. Enter the name of the ship, enter your room number, and do a search on YouTube. You might find a video that someone did on that actual room. It's unbelievable. And then you can see your room now by someone who's an amateur photographer rather than a corporate professional who will just, you know, give you all the good stuff. Here you'll see a real video by a real person. Might help you out. Now, if you know the floor plan of the ship and you know that your room number is 11502 or something like that, and then you see a video from someone who's been on that ship on room number 11. 604 we'll just check the floor plan the deck plan and see if that room looks like your room it's the same size and everything watch that video because that's a pretty good reflection of the kind of room you're going to be in tips little things like that that you can go a long way with that kind of info uh let's see here charles jordan if you have a question that you're not able to find an answer just ask it here yeah just ask we'll we'll try to answer it right away charles jordan vice virtual private network ah thank you vpn what is that Virtual private network. See, even old guys like me learn something new every day. Elizabeth Breen, Breen is saying, Bruce, do you consider starting? Do you consider starting a Facebook group? God, no. <laughs> I haven't got time. Elizabeth, I'm telling you, I'm working 12 to 14 hours a day doing this channel. It doesn't look like it, but I am. I'm I'm up really early, and I'm you know nine ten o'clock. I pack it in. I'm done. Uh, this channel right here, and just promoting this channel with what I'm doing now, is all consuming all incomes and i'm here all the time this is the thing i'm not on the road i'm not on a cruise ship trying to run this channel i'm in my house where i'm you know able to work without interruption i don't even have my television on i rarely put my tv on during the day i haven't got time to watch it i can't handle the interruptions i will catch a headline once in a while there's something going on so i'll put cnn on and watch a headline for a while then i shut it off again and go back to work uh, i can't handle a facebook page on top of this just can't do it it's unbelievable uh, Sherman Mercer, bye, Mark, the lost traveler. Uh, Thomas Arnold is saying, snowing in Big Bear, 27. That's great to hear, Thomas. Now pass some rain on to Pasadena. They need it. They need water bad. Um, Orchard Valley Farms VPN encrypts your data so no one can read it. Charles Jordan, uh, overkill for those that watch YouTube. Uh, let's see here. Uh, from the Future is here. A new subscriber, welcome from the future. Went on Carnival Sunshine. Dining room food was good. Pizza was great, buffet was forgettable, and ship had rust showing on the balcony a turnoff. You know, that's that's a that's telling, isn't it? Isn't that telling? Uh, I saw something else too uh, that caught my eye. Talking about rust. I was uh <clears throat> watching the uh, watching that TV coverage and all that internet coverage about the nonsense in Australia, about the fisticuffs going on on Carnival Legend. And I know that it's not been that long, but the Carnival Legend has been repositioned to be a to be in Melbourne 
for its home port. And so all cruises start and end in, in Melbourne for the, for the moment on this ship. And I happened to notice uh, footage of the ship from the shore. And I think uh, one of the uh, news crews had their, uh, you know, they had their truck out with their camera and their satellite dish, you know, to relay the signal. And I think they were zooming in on that ship very closely, you know, for obvious reasons. They want to kind of zoom in and then do the zoom out shot. You can see the whole cruise ship type of thing because they got to keep movement going. You got this, we all have this eight second attention span. We have to, we have to keep moving. Otherwise we get bored. Um, anyway, the way they zoomed in on the ship, they moved, they zoomed in so close to the ship. I could see rust and you could just tell where, where the water drips down, you know, from the waves, it splashes and then it drips down. And that's where the rust area was. And there were several that I could tell with this close in zoom. And I thought to myself, what are you doing carnival bringing a ship for the first time to Melbourne? You're making it the home port. And why wouldn't you have painted it first? Why, why wouldn't that ship be painted up on the outside? It's just white. <laughs> it's just, you're just painting it white with the red stripes. But I saw the rust. And that, that is a turnoff. That really is. That, that shows age, wear and tear. And I don't see the wear and tear discount on my bill. I only see the, uh, the full charge for the crews and for the add-ons. You know, I, it, it, it's the whole package. Very good point for, uh, from the future. I really like that. Richard Cor uh, Kornomaski saying, Bruce, I did hear that Carnival is cutting back on the pads of butter on the table. They are only supposed to be one pad per dinner. And if they give more than the waiters are disciplined, I'm going to check that out next week. Yeah, yeah, this is, I, I tell you, it's the little things that drive me wacky. Absolutely wacky. It's those little chintzy, penny, penny, tenth of a penny little things that really make me angry because I see no problem where the cruise line is adding 10 bucks to the cruise for the week. So to $10 more. Or you want to be on deck, you're on the balcony and you're on deck six, it's six forty nine for the week. You want to be on deck seven, it's $10 more per night per person. $20 more, $140. To be up one floor on a balcony room. Want to be up another one? Another $140 more. And you guys are chintzing me on the pats of butter on the dinner table at dinner time. And if the waiter, God forbid, puts three or four of them out there, he gets disciplined. Not good. Not on a cruise ship. Not on a cruise ship. Now, I'm not going to take 16 pats of butter on a dinner roll and slap. I'm not going to do that. But this is kind of ridiculous because, you know, the thing I hate too, it's good. this is the old man talking. What I hate about the pats of butter, they're in those, they're in those foil little wrappers. It's a pain in the rear end. You got to unfold it all the time. I take a knife and use it to sort of open, pry it open because it's so soft that it's runny and I don't want the butter on my fingers. I want the butter on either the baked potato or on the dinner roll where it's supposed to be. And so I take the knife and I pry it open and I, and I take a fork and hold it down. And it's like I have to be a brain surgeon on a cruise ship to open up a little pat of butter so I can get the maximum amount of that, what, quarter of an ounce, a third of an ounce, a half an How much is that? It's so puny. And it's, I'm getting frustrated. I don't like it. And you're, you're making me mad. Like you're turning me into one of those 23 people on the carnival legend where every little thing is getting to me. <laughs> I, don't know. I just need a thousand subscribers and I'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> Back to the channel. Oh gosh. Steven, Steven Dukar, uh, June 23rd departure. We'll let you know about the food when I get back. Feet dry, Steve. Yes, I'm dying to know about all that. Um, he says, pushing back from the food table, what is interesting to do in, in Amber Cove? I've not heard too much about it uh, other than a carnival port. Uh, that's a, I think that's a private, um, that's a private, uh, uh, you know, enclave of theirs. Um, I don't, uh, I'm going to recommend you check out YouTube channels and just enter the name of that cove. You'll find all kinds of video on it. Uh, but if it's a private one, you should be okay uh, because they're well run and they're well, generally done. Gina Wells is saying something, uh, a sub number, and, and I can't read it. It's been held back. 
Uh, let me just double check here. Gina Wells, uh, sub number five. Don't know what sub number five means. Uh, Jenny Miller, hi from Toronto. 39 degrees Fahrenheit and raining. Oh, man. Well, at least it's above zero. Uh, you haven't got, hopefully not the freezing rain tonight. I don't know. Welcome, Jenny, back. Welcome back to my channel. Gailey, yes, Richard, there was uh, only a small dish of something that resembled butter on our table. Yeah, see? It, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Absolutely right. Everywhere. Uh, these this, this cutting back. Look, these, these bean counters are taking over the cruise business. I don't like it. Heather Parsons, hi from Whitby, Ontario. Whitby, Ontario. I think you're going to make your goal. I, I, ho I hope so. I'm I, I, I'm hoping I'm hoping. Um, welcome, Heather. It's nice to have you. Uh, Bill Sharp or Bill Sh Bill Shoop. My wife got me and one other to subscribe. Now, sounds like you uh, need to have less than twenty subscribers to get a relative or a friend to get it. Uh, I hope we're that close because I don't know the count right now. Orchard Valley Farms. I always hold the, the butter in my hand to melt it, then give it to my granddaughter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, this is what we got to do, you know. I hate it when it's frozen solid, like really hard. How are you supposed to put it on a, a bun when it's hard as a rock? I, it, that, that's the opposite of the, yeah. There, there Pamela Jordan, 970. Heather Young is saying 970. That means we got 30 to go. Ooh, come on. My hubby and I, uh, Heather Parsons is saying, my hubby and I are heading out on the Disney Fantasy on Saturday. I'll let you know how St. Martin and St. Thomas are doing. Yes, please. I would love to get a first-hand account. Uh, I've only been able to pick up scattered information about it. Uh, a lot of the information is all, uh, you know, paid for information, if you know what I mean. Oh, I mean, it's great. We're open again. and The music is playing and the dancers are dancing and everybody's happy. Yeah, block behind is what I want to know. I really want to get an idea of what's going on. What about those cable cars in St. Thomas? that take you up to the top of that hill up there. That's the beautiful views from up there. I'd really like to know, is a cable car running? Was it damaged? Is it still down? So please let me know. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much, Heather. I'm really looking forward to that. Sylvan is saying one pat of butter is usually one sixth of an ounce, 16 grams. What is this world coming to? I, I, I don't know. I know some of us are obese, but it can't be from the butter, can it? <laughs> can it? <laughs> Doreen Chapman, that will be great. We are there next month. I'm curious about St. Martin. Yes, Doreen wants to know too. We need to hear this. Chevy and First is here. Hey, Bruce, just remember to have other YouTube channels. You are at 972 now. 972, that's 28 to go. We're getting closer. I don't think I want to go off the air until I hit 1,000. I want to stay on. Heather Parsons, I'll let you know. Thanks, Heather. We are dying to find out. Thank you very much about that. Tell us about the ship too. How's it doing? What was the food like? All that stuff. We'll compare notes with everybody. Peter Quadling is saying, Bruce, wife just pointed me at Chime You Adventures ad.com. At Chime, Chime You Adventures.com. They do Amazon, Antarctic, etc. Heard of them? No, have not heard of Chime You Adventures.com. Have not. Uh, have been discovering other cruise lines as I'm doing more and more research that are very small, very boutique-like, um, and are offering uh, high-end, exploratory-type Antarctic cruises, Arctic cruises, um, far north, far south, uh, really exotic stuff. Cruise ships are coming that are more like um, icebreakers. Uh, they're they're more like icebreakers than cruise ships, and they're designed to really get into tight spots. Uh, the uh, the uh, cruise line out of Norway that I was talking about in my video that I did today about the new cruise ships that are coming, uh, their cruise ship has a s s super reinforced hull, and they're also a hybrid electric hybrid drive system. So they're they're using fuel to create. They're generating electricity generating into battery storage and then running off of battery power so that the engines are running quiet they run silent and this is really handy in the delicate areas in the uh, northern reaches of norway where the some of the fjords are where ice uh, icebergs are um where in the south in antarctica where the um, where the penguins are where the seals are and so on and you just don't want to endanger the environment plus the vibration of the ship the engine the the you know that sound 
could cause uh, ice um, uh, collapses on some of the glaciers. And they don't want to be in the middle of that. They don't want to be causing any of that. And so if they can run silent, and get in quietly, and then come back out and disturb as little as possible, the better. That's where a lot of these boutique lines and exploratory lines are headed. I think it's fantastic. Um, they're, they're definitely at the moment high-end uh, type lines. Uh, that's an interesting line. Uh, that's an interesting sounding uh, line, chimeuadventures.com. Uh, Doreen uh, saying thank you. I'm saying thank you back. Uh, Richard Kormaski, yes, I can live without the butter, but if the cruise line is ding dinging the server on it, uh, who don't make much on cruises anyway? That's what drives me crazy. Yeah, these are these are people from the third world that are trying to make a few dollars in the first world from us first worlders, and they're getting hammered by these uh, managers for offering too much butter. That's ridiculous. Uh, if I saw that, if I saw that happening, I'd call that guy over politely. You know, oh hi, can I ask you a question? Why are you grinding these guys? It's a pat of butter for God's sakes. I'd give it to them. I'd just give it to them. Make their lives miserable. Maybe on the last day of the cruise. <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to you know, get kicked off. Oh, man. Uh, Crystal Johnson is saying, hello, Mr. Bruce. It's 56 in North Carolina. I hope you meet your goal. 30 more to go. I'm hoping so, too. We're, we're doing everything we can. We're contacting everybody. We're bothering every person we know. We're calling in personal favors, and we're using threats. <laughs> I know something about you that you did in high school. And I'm going to tell so-and-so, that old girlfriend of yours, who knows your wife, you better subscribe. Oh, it's getting desperate. It's getting desperate. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Crystal. Heather Young, I watched you play. Uh, uh, I watched your playlist till I fell asleep last night, and I played it all night. Laugh out loud. <laughs> well, if you'd have done that, Heather, when I was like a month old, you would have gone through the videos in like an hour. <laughs> Not now. Uh, every one of these live streams is going to take you a long time to go. <laughs> oh, man. That is fantastic. Thanks for the viewership. I, I really appreciate it. You probably watched all the commercials even while you were sleeping. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Charlie Baum is saying, hi, Bruce. Uh, I was in St. Martin in December. The French side still needs work. The Dutch side was better. I'll be there in April. I'll let you know. Thank you, Charlie. I would really like to get an update on that. Uh, you know, in December would have had to have been god awful. I mean, it was just terrible. They were still, you know, doing major rebuild, but they got their act together in Saint Martin. That I have heard. They've got their act together. The president of France went to Saint Martin within three days of the disaster, and he pulled out all the stops. Money does not seem to be a problem in Saint Martin, but in Puerto Rico, we got us a third world situation happening even now in Puerto Rico. And I think we know why. It's not good. Okay, Jenny Miller, we're going on the Crown Princess on March the 3rd. One of our stops is St. Thomas. I will let you know about the Sky Ride as we are hoping it's up and running. Please do. I'm really curious to know, is that thing running or not? And if not, how long will it be until it's back up? Because it's one of the highlights of the island. It's a great outing. You get rated right at the top there. You see all around, it's fantastic. You got, you got to take your camera and take pictures from up there. It's stunning. Really nice. Gailey S. is saying, St. Martin nude beach was wiped out. <laughs> a fellow passenger had been there a few years ago and was almost in tears as everything was gone. Oh, no. Well, hopefully they'll rebuild it and, you know, resand it. Um, then we can get back to sightseeing again. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Henry Young is telling me he's 973. That's 27 away. We're getting there, but we're not there. Oh, we're coming. Oh, this is good stuff. Charles Jordan, Jenny Miller, that will be great. This is our list of to-do when we go on our next cruise. We only have 299 more days, or as I say, 42 weeks and six days, laughing out loud, left to go. Crossing our fingers, make time go by. Ann Smith, thank you, Charles Jordan. Chevy and First is saying, Charles Jordan, my countdown in 251 days or 30 weeks and five days going on Carnival Conquest. Six-day Caribbean. I'm hoping for a good cruise for you guys. I'm hoping Carnival gets their act together on every level. Oh, Orchard Valley Farms is saying, I am Yacht Club on the 12th of May, and I will have a full report for you on the MSC Seaside. And I am pretty confident you're going to be happy with your accommodations. The Yacht Club and all of its amenities, I think you're going to be fine with that, and I'd love to hear about it. Please. But it's the rest of it. Uh, yes, the buffet food. What about that? 
What about customer service? What about those annoying announcements in six languages for every little thing? I'd be curious about all that. So yes, please. And of course, the poop smell, can you find it? Not that I'm asking to seek it out, but if you come across it, you'll know. Let us know if you come across it. Hope you don't. I hope you I hope you actually go and look for it. You can't find it. I, I really I really hope you can't find it. Oh, that has been just a disaster so far. Jeffrey Storer is saying, I'm going to be on the seaside on the 16th of June. Um, I'll be in Orea class. Okay. Uh, I don't know what Orea class is, but you're going, and I'll look forward to hearing your report when you get back. You can tell all of us what's going on. Be quite curious to know because we're all asking what's going on with the seaside. Uh, <laughs> Orchard Valley says, I'll, I'll be looking for the poop smell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sherman Mercer is saying, how are the tips distributed on a cruise ship? Okay, I don't have the formula, but um, I can tell you this much. Uh, a good buddy of mine, his son was a dancer on Princess for, I think, five or six years. Met his future wife there, a fellow dancer, on his second year. And they uh, got together. And uh, for the last three or four years of their career, they merged their contract with the approval of princess princess quite happy about that and they were dancing as a couple for the last three or four years of their contracts with princess on the same ship around the world and they built strong friendships and a lot of alliances he has told me some information about the the underworld what happens down below deck four down there which he lived in and uh the tipping um, now, he couldn't tell me exact splits or anything like that, but um, generally speaking, the tipping is divided. Uh, it's like a flat charge, or, you know, suggested tip charge to your room. It's just put onto your account. I usually prepay mine before I even get on the ship, get it out of the way. Um, if it's $14 a day, it's U.S. dollars. It's split amongst the crew uh, from your room steward to the secondary person that the, the vacuums, the floors, the hallways. Um, then there's the uh, wait staff in all the restaurants, specific, specifically the, the restaurants that don't charge extra. So the dining room, the main dining room, the buffet area, the, uh, the uh, folks who are cleaning the, the cleaning off the tables, the bus boys, uh, there's the captains, there's the uh, maitre d's. There's a formula figured out that X amount of dollars comes in and then it's divvied out among the crew on some formula basis. And uh, my, my friend who was working on the cruise ship was telling me that it's not uncommon for a uh, gentleman working on the cruise ship, say he's your, uh, your cabin steward, and he's making um, 150 bucks a week as salary, uh, 600 a month, plus room and board provided, and free internet provided. Uh, but he can buy a beer downstairs if he wants one for a buck. Like it's basically at cost, but his, his other drinks are free. Um, but he'll make $800 a month additionally in tip money, upwards of that. Now, there are a lot of passengers who also want to pay a cash tip over and above the suggested tip to certain crew members that they've come to, you know, frequent. Might be the masseuse. Uh, in you know where you get a massage, might be your spa attendant, might be a, a person who done your hair or did your nails. If you got a manicure, pedicure, uh, the person who's giving you act acupuncture, they the, you might be paying them cash separately right as the treatment is done, or you could have the option of adding the tip amount on your charge, the spa charge. You can just add five, ten bucks right there. But for the room server, uh, for the room steward that looks after your room. It's not uncommon for passengers to slip that individual five or 10 or 20 bucks or more, depending on the kind of room they're in, uh, for the excellent service, especially if you found that they went above and beyond normal. Maybe you asked for something specific and they delivered big time for you uh, and you want to give an extra 10 or 20 bucks at the end of the cruise. You give them that $20 bill, that's theirs. They don't have to split that with anybody. That goes right into their bank account. That $20 bill, We'll end up in the Philippines back with the family. Uh, it's huge. It's huge. And so these uh, staff members can really you know, make more. And so you'll find that if you're on a, a balcony, in a balcony room, inside room, ocean view room, doesn't matter, 
these people who are tending to you, they're looking after you any way they can, any way possible they'll look after you. And if you want certain things done a certain way, they'll take care of you. In my case, when I get into bed at night, I find it really frustrating when the sheet is tucked in at the back of the bed because I'm six feet long. My wife is five foot five. I'm six feet long and my feet are out down at the end of the bed. And I hate the fact that the sheet is tucked in underneath the mattress and my feet are crammed up and I have to pull on the darn thing to get it up. I just mentioned to my room steward that here's what we want when, we, when you make the bed. <laughs> the wife's half, she likes it tucked in. <laughs> since 76, folks. I've been with her since 76. My half, I like it tucked out. <laughs> No problem whatsoever. He knows. He takes care of it. The bed is half tucked in, half tucked out. It's neat, pretty looking and all, but that's what he does. And I really appreciate it because now I don't have to fight with the darn thing every night when I go into bed. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff. They'll go above and beyond. And if you give them a tip directly, oh, do they appreciate it big time. And if you're tipping people on uh, the pool deck, uh, they're bringing you a rum and Coke and you give them a uh, slip of a $1 bill, or a $2 bill for that first drink they deliver, you may find that subsequent rounds that are coming are a little stronger than the last one. <laughs> and they are attentive. Oh, the minute you get down to one quarter of a glass of rum and coke, there's another one. Would you like another one? They're right there for you. Your dirty dishes, they're gone. They're gone so fast, you won't believe it. So there you go. That might be something for you to, uh, to keep in mind, tipping. Uh, let me just check my messages and want to make sure I'm up to speed here. Uh, countdown, countdown. You did the countdowns. Looking for the poop smell. Thank you. Tips. Okay, Teresa. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, Terrence is here. Okay, your message was partially blocked, but I unblocked it. Uh, Terrence saying, hi, Bruce. 6 p.m. and 80 degrees here in Tampa. Got my wife, son, and his wife to subscribe. My wife has not even used YouTube before. Well done. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. This is what we're talking about. We're going into desperate measures. <laughs> we're pulling all the stops, folks. We got to get to a thousand subscribers today. The sooner the better. Thank you very much for that. Charles Jordan, Chevy and first. It will be our second cruise on the Oasis and our third cruise overall. Our first was on Royal Caribbean Enchantment of the Seas. All of our Royal Caribbean cruises have been nothing short of fantastic. And way to go, Charles. Keep the street going with the next ones. Fantastic. Sherman Mercer, we prepay tips and we do extra cash for excellent service and we do not want to see anyone slighted as that is hard work seven days a week for the contract length. Yeah, these contracts for the, uh, for the uh, you know, the lower, lower paid folks, 11 months, 11 months and they get a month off. Uh, it's tough. In some cases, it's five months and they get a month off, but it's, it's, seven days a week folks there's not no stop in this thing it's tough work really tough work and they they earn it they earn every dime they get in in full richard i um, i see i always tip the room attendant the first time 20 to 40 dollars and give any special requests ice bags etc and tell them i will tip them later i have had excellent service uh, i do keep standard tips on the account of that oh, boy will you ever you will get oh they'll be all over you richard is saying on the drinks guys I give a buck and then they run to refill your drink anywhere. <laughs> they run. Yes. Yes. Because cash is cash. Uh, that pool, that tip pool, they're getting pennies a drink. Pennies. But with, with your uh, $1, that's theirs. It's huge. It, 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 they, will, they will run and jump as high as possible for you. I'm telling you. Not like on land. You know, you're at a five-star resort and the, uh, the waitress by the pool side she knows she's getting two bucks a drink every time, a buck a drink every time. And she comes out of that bar with a tray full of 20 drinks. She's got a $20 bill guaranteed in her pocket. And so they get used to it. They just kind of get, yeah, this is great. But on the cruise ship, they don't always get cash tips. The, the, the passengers are paying an 18% gratuity on top of the drink anyway. Well, if it's a $3 drink, it's a 56 or 54 cent tip. If it's a $7 drink, times 18 percent it's a dollar so they're not getting five dollars a drink and tip money anything like that back on the five-star resort you get the young single guy who's from wall street and he's down with his buddy and they're hanging out in the bar on the pool deck at the five-star resort in miami and there's a good looking attractive 
waitress coming by, they're slipping her five bucks every time because they want to get her number. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Well, this gal has got dozens of people like this every week that are trying to get her number and more. And she's raking in hundreds of dollars a day, plus the wage of the hotel and the benefits of being an employee in the United States. It's pretty good. And for a young college gal, why not? Uh, my daughter was in college in, in university in Calgary. She was working at a, a private club. Uh, it's kind of a winter club, curling in the winter, swimming in the summer and golf and so on. And she was serving these high-end clients to a T. She took care of these people. And the gentlemen were tipping her more than the women. <laughs> now, some of the gals would slip her 10 bucks and, and look after her too. But the guys always tip more than the girls. Because she was a young gal, university student, of course. And she needed the money because she had to pay tuition and come up with the book money and everything else. And, of course, mom, mom and I, we did the best we could as well. But it didn't hurt, didn't hurt that she was making this extra money on the side. That's what you got to do. But on a cruise ship, oh, they're so grateful. You can see it. You can instantly see it. It's incredible. It's, uh, Crystal Johnson saying, when is your next cruise? Crystal, I think it's the fall. Uh, I'll be doing this full-time, non-stop through August, which will make one year until I've started. Uh, and I really got to get to about 5,000 subs before I can do it. I got to get to 5,000 because at 5,000 subs and higher, if I'm going to talk to a cruise line and talk to them about a meet and greet cruise for me and my uh, viewers, subscribers, I want to have a little bit of oomph behind that number and can say, you know, Got 15,000 views a day uh, watching my videos on my YouTube channel with my 5,000 subscribers. And we're thinking of uh, kind of maybe going on a cruise as a meet and greet. And uh, just wondering if you'd like some of our business, Norwegian, World Caribbean, all in America, whatever. We'll find out who wants it the most when we got a little bit of oomph behind the thing. So that's why uh, I'm thinking of the fall towards that tip. so i'll keep you posted as soon as you as soon as i know you'll know heather young is telling me seven nine seventy four twenty six to go heather that's good news let's hope for more doreen chapman 32 days for me yippee heather young 975 that's 25 to go let's keep it going folks doreen chapman laugh out loud charles jordan 42 weeks and six days for us crystal johnson sherman mercer saying nine days and a few hours to caribbean relief from stress and weather yes it's going to be great. Doreen Chapman, that is close, Sherman. Enjoy. Bill Shoup is saying, regarding beach mentioned above, I'm reminded of our tour guide who called it the dark side and discouraged people from going. <laughs> the nude beach. <laughs> well, you know, some folks have certain beliefs and others have certain other kinds of beliefs. And some of the beliefs are seeing more and some of the beliefs are seeing less. <laughs> so... To each his own. Uh, that is too bad that the beach got wiped out. Hopefully it's being rebuilt uh, for everyone's enjoyment. Gina Wells sounds great. Crystal Johnson, great. Uh, <laughs> fantastic stuff. Now, I did have something I was going to talk about today. I, I had notes prepared. I was going to tell you guys about some stuff. The, the bit of news that I got today was that uh, Cunard uh, has the uh, one ship known as the Queen Elizabeth. Um, they have announced that the Queen Elizabeth liner is going to be uh, home porting in Melbourne for 2019 and 2020. But then I read a little bit more, and I realized, yeah, 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 they're they're going to home port in Melbourne. I I, I hear you, but the reality is this: the home porting that they're going to do in Melbourne is only for about a hundred days. It's only going to cover about eight to ten or twelve cruises. It's just a seasonal thing. Um, and then the other thing, of course, I know is that, and a lot of you know this, uh, uh, Carnival owns Cunard. And right now, uh, the uh, Carnival legend is in Melbourne. That's the one with the fistfights. And so I think what they'll do is for those 10 weeks that Cunard comes in, that they're going to take the legend and move it off somewhere else. And then it'll come back after the Cunard moves out, when the Cun Elizabeth moves on to its next stop, then the legend will come back. That wouldn't surprise me if that's what's going on. And maybe, maybe that's the, the coincidental timing for the legend to go into dry dock. And that might be in Bermuda. That might be in Indonesia. It might be in Thailand. We, we don't know yet, but eventually we'll know. And then that ship will do a repositioning cruise from Melbourne to Jakarta or to uh, Bangkok or to, I don't know, 
Hong Kong, wherever. And then it'll work its way to dry dock for two weeks, four weeks, five weeks, get a major redo, and then be reassigned back to Australia or be reassigned completely somewhere else. And another carnival ship comes in to take the place of the legend after Cunard QE goes out. This is typically how cruise lines do it. And with Carnival owning five or six different cruise lines, they can juggle out their cruise ships all over the place and make it sound all new and exciting, all new. It's the same company. They're just moving different ships around. But there's nothing wrong with the Cunard Queen Elizabeth coming to Melbourne. That's going to be great. There's going to be people taking that cruise because they've always wanted to be on a Cunard ship. And they've always wanted to see what the Q Queen Elizabeth is like. It's a nice five-star cruise line. And it's very very good reviews so that should be pretty good so that was my one bit of news that i wanted to bring to you today and then the second thing i wrote up today was i found some deals and from time to time i'll tell you guys about some cruise deals i think are just great and uh, for those of you who haven't been on a cruise for a while never been on a cruise for a while um kind of thinking i might do a cruise or you're getting an itch to get on a cruise ship well maybe one of these two that i found will work for you now, the first one uh, takes off on March the 25th. So it's a month from now, roughly, five and a half weeks. But it's a deal. Uh, it's a seven-night cruise on the Celebrity Silhouette. That's a five-star, five and a half stars. Really nice. They just got excellent reviews last week from passengers, from cruisers. The food is fantastic. The cabins are great. And the value is pretty good. Well, I got value. This is a Fort Lauderdale departure and return. It's a Caribbean cruise, seven days. You're going San, you're going at sea first, then you're going to for, for to San Juan for a day, then to Saint Thomas, Saint Martin, stops we're talking about, uh, and then you've got two sea days and you're back to Fort Lauderdale. Now you can take an inside room for five seventy nine, or you could take an ocean view room for six fifty nine. I wouldn't do it. I'd give up those two just. Let those go. Forget about it. Why don't you take the balcony for six fifty nine? That's a bargain right there. But how about a kicker? One hundred twenty five dollar credit from the cruise line, which is sixty two fifty each off that price of six fifty nine. You're talking just under six hundred dollars. Balcony on the silhouette for a Caribbean cruise in uh, March. That's glorious hot weather. It's eighty now in Florida. We're hearing about it right now from our friends. Who are in Delray, who are in Fort Lauderdale, who are in uh, Daytona Beach. It's 80 now. March 25th, 85, 87. Nice. You got a balcony room for 600 bucks. What a deal. So I did a little comparison shopping. <laughs> uh, by the way, you know, I keep talking about this too. If you're a shareholder, in this case of um, Royal Caribbean, you own 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock. Royal Caribbean owned celebrity, you get a $100 additional credit, room credit off of that cruise for the cabin. That's another 50 bucks each. You're down to 550 bucks for a balcony suite on the celebrity silhouette. That's a giveaway. That is a giveaway. You're going to eat more than that in, in money. Okay. Here's the comparison. I figured a five star resort hotel in Miami. South Miami, whatever. <laughs> and this five and a half star cruise line, that's a fair comparison in quality. And here's what I came up with the cruise is uh, $660 approximately for the balcony. That's $1,320. Uh, then you pay taxes and port charges. I figured $220. That's $110 each. And then I calculated the tips at $110 each approximately. That's another $220. That brings the uh, uh, the ship to seventeen hundred and forty dollars, and then I added two hundred dollars in specialty restaurant add-ons. Gave you a little room to go to a special restaurant. I don't think you'd need it, but you can always add it on. Now you're at nineteen hundred forty bucks for the two of you on that cruise ship for the week, and your drinks are extra. I left the drinks out of it because you're going to buy drinks on shore, you're going to buy drinks offshore. I took the drinks out of the package. Nineteen hundred forty bucks for two for a one-week Caribbean cruise on a five-and-a-half-star cruise line. Five-star hotel in Miami, you'll be lucky to get a room for $400 a night. That's going to run you $2,800. You'll then pay uh, taxes and resort fees, and I'm figuring it's going to be another $560. It'll be 20% by the time you figure it out. Then you're going to pay tips and meals because you're not getting your meals in the hotel. You're going to pay about $300 a day. 
$2,100. That's $150 a person per day. You're up to $2,100 more. And then if you have a car, you're renting it or you're not. You're parking it uh, or you're taking taxis to get around. Uh, that I didn't even add in. That's still to be added on. Without without any other charges for drinks and all those tips the restaurant, the, the, the waitress is getting, that is $5,460 for two for the week. So you want to compare 1940 or 5460 It's It's not even close. It's not, this deal on celebrity is the, the hotel can't match it. They, there's no way they're giving you the room for $199 a night, not in a five-star. You'll be lucky to get a holiday in for 200 bucks a night, and that's a three-and-a-half-star. Not a chance. Unbelievable. Okay, the second cruise was another bargain that I found that uh, also caught my eye. It's also five stars. It's Holland America, the Eurodam. Beautiful ship. Easy five-star service. 17 nights, April the 18th. And this is a repositioning cruise. And look at this one. You're starting in Fort Lauderdale. And then you have two days at sea. You end up in Cartagena, Colombia. Then you're going through the Panama Canal. And you have a day at sea after that. You're then in Costa Rica for a day, Nicaragua for a day, Guatemala for a day. Then you're in Puerto Chiapas, Mexico for the day. And then you're in Halt, Halt Lucio, Mexico for the day. I can't pronounce it. You're in Mexico for another day. Then a sea day. Then Manzanillo, Texas, um, Mexico. Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Cabo St. Lucas, Mexico. Two days at sea. And you end the cruise in San Francisco. I left my heart in San Francisco. Well, you're going to leave the Eurodam in San Francisco. And boy, are you going to be missing her because the deal they're offering you is unbelievable. You're talking about a balcony for $1,755. You get a $200 credit. You get a $250 shareholder credit if you're a shareholder of Carnival. And you're down to $1,530 a person for a 17-night cruise. That is like 80 odd dollars a night in a balcony for 17 nights, $200 in taxes, 240 in tips. You're talking $1,970 a person for that deal. That's a killer deal for that cruise, Panama Canal cruise. Unbelievable. A hotel resort for 17 nights, talking four to 6,000 bucks easy. Easy. This is a steal of a deal. And you're getting a 17 night cruise from one side of North America all the way to the other. You got to love it. Southwest Airlines, you can easily get to Fort Lauderdale. And from San Francisco, you can easily get back to where you came from. And you know Southwest Airlines sells fares each leg. Cheap, cheap, cheap. That's a bargain. That's a bargain. That's two cruises I thought I'd mentioned to you today that I came across that I thought were pretty interesting to watch. For you first timers, that would be a cool deal. This uh, cruise, uh, when does it go, Bruce? April 18th. I said that. April 18th is when this one leaves. You've got a couple of months to figure it out if you want to do it. What a way to start cruising, let me tell you. Okay, let me just see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Any more messages? Orchard Valley Farms, I love the show. Thank you. <laughs> we got 54 viewers right now. We're in there. We're locked in. We're loving it. Heather Young, I enjoy listening to him. That's why I keep his videos playing all night long. <laughs> Listen, folks, if all 54 of you would just leave my channel on all night long. <laughs> Go to bed at like 9 o'clock. Get up at 7, 8 in the morning, and, and you kept my videos running on a playlist all night long. They won't be finished, but boy, will my views ever go up. <laughs> YouTube will be wondering, what's with these people? Eight hours of view time per viewer? What's with this guy? Unbelievable. Uh, Debbie saying, awesome deals. I tell you, Debbie, they are, are awesome. I find them on vacationstogo.com. I'm not hiding where I get these from. Vacationstogo.com. Easy. Uh, and they change every day. These fares change every day. Uh, Richard Kormaski, some nice repositioning cruises from the U.S. to Europe in the spring. Yeah, there's a couple of good ones. Not very many cheap, cheap ones, but there's a couple of good ones. Koningsdam, Holland America, Koningsdam. I think it's, uh, is it Fort Lauderdale to Rome? I think that's the one. That's priced right under a thousand bucks. Yeah, nice. Uh, Paula K. Hi, Bruce. 45 in Hanover and rain 70s the next couple of days. Crazy weather. A uh, little late today. No problem, Paula. You'll be watching the replay today. Don't worry. <laughs> Heather Young gives a lot of good information. She, uh, Crystal Johnson saying, my daughter and son subscribe. Fantastic. Where are we at, folks? What's my count? I can't see it from here. I'd like to know what's my subscriber count. 
Crystal Johnson, my daughter and I subscribe. Okay, Debbie Emanuel, yay, Crystal, bringing in two more. Way to go. Be curious to know where we're at. We got to get to a thousand. We got to get to a thousand today. We cannot miss it. I cannot do it tomorrow. It'll just kill me to be this close and not have a thousand subscribers. We're just praying we're going to reach and break that number. Pamela John Jordan saying nine seventy five. They're twenty five away. Thank you, Pamela. Nine seventy five. Oh, it I, I it, it scares me that I'm twenty five away. Still twenty five away. It's six twenty eight New York time. I think I'm in the last four or five hours of my time frame before they cut us off. I don't know if it's midnight West Coast time. I don't know if it's midnight East Coast time. I don't know exactly what what time. I'm just praying that it's midnight because you know. Today is the 19th, not the 20th. And so I'm just hoping we get there. Uh, Heather Young's going, yay! <laughs> like I said, folks, you know anybody out there who's thinking of going on a cruise or might enjoy these videos or some of the videos I've already posted, you get them to subscribe today, right now. Share my videos, tell the world what's going on, and get Bruce to 1,000 subs. He needs 1,000 subs. After I hit 1,000 subs, I'm really not going to talk about it very much. <laughs> I hope I don't have to talk about it anymore. I will, of course, update you on my account, of course, because I'm thrilled that we are where we are and where we're growing. I, I'm just I'm over the moon. I mean, on on um, on Thursday, before the Australia fight story came out on the Carnival Legend, uh, I was averaging 1,700 to 2,000 views every day, typically around that mark. I'd hit 2,800 once, but I was kind of in that. 1800, 1700, 1900, 2000. That's where the views were. And 15, 20 subscribers a day were coming on board. Every day you could just count on it. All heck broke, broke loose on the Carnival Legend, as you folks know. And so I posted that Friday. We did that Friday discussion. Oh my goodness. Uh, I was getting, uh, instead of getting 100 views in an hour, I was getting 300, then 400, then 500 views an hour on my channel and that one live stream was just exploding and all night long two 300 views an hour all night long normally in the evening i'm down to 50 views an hour people go to sleep it just wouldn't stop because the, my friends in australia were watching it's 12 hours difference and so i'm getting views from all over the place and the view the, the, the subscribers started to go saturday we did the live stream again and we talked about this cruise again because more information came out. Well, Saturday we we hit another record. So I think I went from 2,000 views or something like that to about 4,300 views on Friday, and then Saturday I think we did 8,800 views. That's the new record for this channel: 8,800 views. That is like doing 300,000 views a month. And there are full-time five-year-old travel channels doing that kind of volume all the time. And that was for one day, I joined the club. I got that high. Then Sunday, of course, I don't do a live stream on Sunday. And uh, the views still came in at 5 odd thousand. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I think today we're going to be 4,000 to 5,000 again. Just amazing. So we've, we've kind of hit a new level. And now the hope is that we maintain a new normal. Will the new normal be 4,000, 3,500 to 4,500? Will that be it? Or will it be higher? The higher, the better, because the higher it gets, the more advertising revenue will come in. And, uh, of course, I can make a living. <laughs> Start to maybe, maybe make a living. But I got to get 1,000 subscribers to keep it going. And so it would be a shame to miss it and just start hitting four and 5,000 views a day and getting nothing for it for a month. And there I have to kiss away 150, 200,000 views of revenue that we've worked so hard to get. So that's why it's so important to reach a thousand subscribers. So there you are. Uh, 977. Heather's telling me 977. Uh, Richard, see you on Tuesday, Bruce. Richard, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Charles Jordan, only 23 more to go. Richard saying Carnival must love you. You know, I'm not the only one complaining, obviously, but I'm broadcasting it because a fact is a fact. If you're not delivering the goods, you're not delivering the goods. And you guys have for decades. What's going on? Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, pa uh, Pamela Jordan, come on. 23 more. 23 more. Bye, Sherman, she's saying. Uh, Betsy Lane here. Six days until Anthem of the Seas. Oh, you got to be just, it's just got to be killing you. It's just, you're so close. You're on. You're, you're, this is your last Monday. Tomorrow's your last Tuesday. Wednesday will be your last Wednesday. The next Wednesday, we'll be on a cruise ship. Think about that. 
Fantastic. Uh, Debbie Emanuel just got off the phone badgering another one of my friends. Way to go, Debbie. I love it. Badgering is the word. <laughs> Why haven't you subscribed to this guy? I told you about this guy a month ago, and you said you'd subscribe. Why haven't you subscribed? What's with you? He needs you more than ever now. You can't let me down. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell you, I'm losing my voice, as you can tell already i am so excited uh nervous excited and giddy and i will be watching the channel like laser and uh i'm just praying i don't have to come on tonight at 11 o'clock and beg <laughs> i want to be in bed by nine o'clock having done it and just go thank god we got that over with and we're through that barrier because for whatever reason a thousand subscribers had to be the new number it couldn't be 500 or it couldn't be 60 days notice, or it couldn't be till the end of February. No, it had to be February the 20th, which meant the end of business on the 19th. And I'll tell you, when I first heard that number, I thought, oh God, I'm not gonna make it. I'll be at 600. There's not a chance, I'm not even close. And I thought, well, I'll put the word out and I'll tell my subscribers, I'll tell my viewers, because at that time, 85% of all the views on my channel were not from subscribers. They're from just people watching. And so I started pointing at them going, please, please, if you're watching this channel, you like the channel, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's easy. There's a button here. There's a button here. And it'll just make all the difference. And sure enough, 600 came in. Now it looks like we've got 700 have come in. We're down to the last 20 something. Fantastic. So I'm really excited. Uh, Skyhawk 1987 Turbo is here. I'm late, but someone said 907 seven subbies. Mine says only 974. Just refresh your page. Go to the top corner where that little circle is. Hit that, and it'll reload it, and boom, you'll get the new count. Uh, Skyhawk, get on the phone and find somebody for me. <laughs> We're not there yet. We got to get 23 more. We need help. Charles Jordan saying, refresh your page. George McCarver saying, start begging right after this stream ends. <laughs> and they're young. Mine says 977. Refresh your page. Gailey is saying 977 here too. Paula K, I got the word out. Everyone's getting the word out. <laughs> That's what we need. We we just need a push from you know 20 of us find one each. We got it. We, we got it. We're that we're so close. I can taste it. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be uh gonna be entertaining and exciting. I'll tell you, I'll be watching this. Like you wouldn't believe my wife's going to be wondering, well, did you do it? Did you make it? Are you okay now? Are you, can you relax now? And uh, you, you can tell I'm all relaxed. <laughs> I'm all calm, just calm and collective. It's, a, it's all good. It's all good. Oh, I tell you, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I, I, I really get a kick out of it. Uh, it's the craziest job I've ever had. Uh, I talk to a computer all day long. Well, most of the day or part of the day, I talk to a computer. And I think about what am I going to talk about to the computer tomorrow? That's the, the next part. And then, of course, I get on the Twitter and go to Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and just reload and reload and keep everybody updated and answer comments from my, from my viewers. Tons of comments coming in now. This weekend, oh, hundreds, just hundreds. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, Heather Young, 978. Oh, and 22 to go. Fantastic. That's my lucky number. I was born on the 22nd of September. Virgo, number 22 is my lucky number. We need 22 more people. Oh, would that be great? Well, there you have it. That's what we need, and let's hope we get it. This has been one hour and 36 minutes. I'm wondering, should I cut it here? Where you've still got 47 viewers going. Anybody have any questions about cruising? This is your last chance, because otherwise I'm going to shut this down and just uh, send out tweets. <laughs> Kaylee yes, is saying, it's coming up to midnight here. I don't dare go to bed. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Kaylee. It's great to have you back. <laughs> Oh man, I got I've got him in the UK. I got him watching in Australia. I, it's the, the sun never sets on traveling with Bruce. Did you notice that the sun never goes down on traveling with Bruce? Sunny here. And then when I go to bed, it's sunny in Australia. They're watching there. It's unbelievable. It's funny. <laughs> I love it. It's just 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 great. Uh, Heather Young, nine seventy nine. We got another one. Twenty one to go. We're coming in. Oh my goodness, we're coming in on the last twenty one. This is fantastic. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm going to take a look at my little phone here. Uh, Charles, not yet, Bruce. Let's make a run for a thousand first. 
Pamela Jordan saying, I'm Virgo too, born on the 6th of September. Great month, Bruce. Yes, it is. We Virgos, we're always smiling. Uh, fantastic. Let's take a look at this thing here. 949, I'm showing right here. Yep, nine. Well, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry, 949. That's a while ago. Let me refresh that. 979, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> My goodness. And right now, real time views while I'm talking to you in the last hour, 260 people have been watching the channel. And over the last 48 hours, 9,900 views. And in the last, an hour ago, we were pushing 380 views during the hour. That's what that bar is right there on the very end. This is showing my hour by hour view rate. And the dips are the middle of the evening. There's this morning. And there's this morning as we're building up, building up. And that's during the this cast right now is that tall bar right there. And the next one to it is current right now live. That's what's happening. So we're plugging away. Uh, we're trying to do it. Uh, and we keep getting updates. I'm showing 979. Uh, 21 to go. And uh, it's exciting as I'll get up. <laughs> and when I posted my video today, uh, I was 71 away. And then I was updating it to 68, and 63, and 56. And now we're 21 away. Uh, what do we have here? Um, Betsy Lane is saying, I shared on Facebook and Twitter. George McCrower saying, any comments about U.S. River Cruise Lines and Cruises? Yeah, U.S. River Cruise Line and Cruises. I, I've got something to tell you about that. Um, uh, I was watching, I saw a story, and I think it's a, a little while ago. It wasn't, it wasn't like in the last week. It might have been a month or two ago. And I think this story kind of just, there's a press release that was made and then just kind of, disappeared into the ether as it were kind of like those baseball players in uh, that movie um, the baseball movie where they walk into the corn you know and they just disappear right i uh, love that movie um anyway um it was about viking it was about viking river cruises and the story was that viking river cruises was uh contemplating what american city would become the home port city for river cruising for North America to start it off. And Viking River Cruises was looking to build the ships in the US because the ships were going to be used in the United States and therefore had to have a certain amount of content, percentage build content in the United States. But the other problem or the other issue uh, in reality is if you're going to um, apply U.S. waters, even though you have a U.S. registered craft, you also have to have U.S. citizens running the ship, room servants, laundry people, kitchen staff, the crew, of course, uh, maintenance and everything else. And of course, Viking wanted to really make it work. They wanted to make it work in a big way. Uh, they wanted to make PR home run after home run is what they were looking for they wanted to have a big celebration as to what city or cities would be home ports and then would be visited because it's economic money for every you get a river cruise with you know three or four hundred uh travelers on it now hitting your town for four six eight hours little town along the mississippi it's going to make a difference so they want to make a home run on that they wanted to make the home run the pr home run about building vessels in the united states from american builders they wanted to hit the home run ball about employing american workers they wanted to they hit they want to hit every home run ball they really wanted to make an impact and then reality set in they realized oh my gosh if we're going to build the vessel in the united states we have to build it under certain building codes we have to build it under certain building standards and there are only so many shipyards in the united states that are capable of building this vessel and these guys are almost um well, they're almost kind of like getting together and kind of like saying, yeah, we'll build you a couple of river boats, but this is our price. And River Viking went to compare to the next guy. and Not much difference in cost. And it's high, very high. Uh, and then the standards were pretty tough, and uh, which is fine. But um, these, uh, these builders were not cheap. And they were realizing we can't, um, we can't operate in the United States. The cost of admission just to get in, uh, we can't do it. Now, if we could take a riverboat from Austria and bring it across the Atlantic and, you know, bring it up to the Mississippi 
Uh, we've already paid for it. We've already built it. You know, we can then crew it up with Americans and all that. Maybe then, but there's all kinds of restrictions, all kinds of rules, all kinds of ways that you can't do it. And uh, it sounds to me like Viking is kind of thrown in the towel. Um, they were talking about uh, applying the, the uh, um, what's it called, the, um, the waterway system along the Atlantic, the, the, the interior, the indoor, um, any voters out there, you know what I'm talking about. There's a waterway system from South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, all the way up that isn't in ocean water. You're actually inside a breaker that runs up hundreds of miles. And they were talking about river cruising along that area as well, which would bring cruising to Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, um, Charlotte, North Carolina, um, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, Charleston, this whole, is it the uh, inland waterway system? There's a, there's a name for it and I can't, I'm losing it because I wasn't planning on talking about it today. If any of you guys know, you can certainly tell me. Inland waterway, Steve, that's it. Thank you. Uh, anyway, that was the plan. The plan was to to offer Mississippi River cruising, other tributaries, the inland waterway system there. They really wanted to make a big, big impact and really bring river cruising to America. And I think it's been priced up. I, I, I think they've done the math and they've just gone, it's impossible. We, we, we'd have to charge a thousand a night for a cabin. And it's just not going to fly. They, they can't do it with 50% occupancy. It's got to be 98% occupancy on every cruise. And um, the other problem you have is seasonal. It's a seasonal thing. And how are you going to bring a river cruise ship down the coast around Florida, up back into the Gulf and up the Mississippi and ply that area? You still got nasty winter weather sometimes as far south and the hurricane season and the tornado season. And I think it's a done deal. I think it's uh, it's a broken deal. And uh, I don't think it'll happen in a big way. Now, there are U.S. river cruise operators. There's like they're small and they're infrequent and they're they seem to be competitively priced, but I don't know if they're making any money. And uh, the thing about river cruising is if you've ever been on a Viking river cruise in Germany or France, uh, Austria, Germany, uh, you're used to a certain standard of excellence from that, and you've paid it. You've paid for it. It's not cheap to go on a river cruise in Europe. It's quite expensive. But boy, do you get the five-star dining, five-course dinner, alcohol included, excursions included. I mean, you get the whole all-inclusive package, but in the U.S., um, you're trying to get Americans to pay that kind of money on a, a domestic cruise that may or may not attract enough of that clientele. It's out of reach for the uh, for the Carnival passenger. It's out of reach for the Holland America passenger, Royal Caribbean average passenger. They they wouldn't do it. They they'd say I can get a I can get a balcony room on Royal Caribbean Harmony of the Seas for you know 120 a night in the balcony. That's 240 a night plus taxes and fees. The river thing is 400 night for each of us plus plus plus. It's priced out of the market. So I think that's what that's a a, a longer answer than I would pl anticipating. But I, I guess I'm killing a bit of time. <laughs> George, that's what I'm thinking about on that one. Um, but I really haven't researched any further to be honest. Um, Heather Young saying 979 979. Charles Jordan says don't go yet. Let's run for a thousand. Uh, then George asked me about this thing with the river cruise crystal. No, stay until seven. Charles Jordan, Crystal, thumbs up. Pamela Jordan, we're not letting you go until we reach a thousand. Heather Young, nine eighty. George McCrower, just trying to keep you on stream. Gail, yes, come on, Team Bruce, let's go for a gold medal. Heather Young, nine eighty one. Pamela Jordan, yes, Gail, yes, go, Team Bruce. Heather Young, nine eighty two. Bill Shupp is saying, is a subscriber deadline twelve Eastern tonight or exactly when? I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem. Heather Young, nine eighty. For Steve Bartley, Inland Waterway, thank you very much. Bill Shupp, Bruce is the kind of guy you love to succeed in their goals. Uh, so true, Bill Shupp. Gailey says, Heather Young, 985, searching for intercoastal waterway, George is saying. Yes, George, intercoastal waterway. Thank you very much, sir. I knew, I knew you'd find it. I knew. Pamela Jordan, absolutely, Bill. 
Heather Young, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, people. Thank you very much. Debbie Manuel, I do thumbs up before I watch the videos. And it was you because I noticed before we went on the air, I had uh, three or four followers uh, showing on the meter, and I already had a thumbs up. I haven't even been on yet. <laughs> it was you. Way to go. Thank you very much. I love it. Oh, it's getting interesting, getting fun. Love the fact that we're this close. I'll update my, refresh my page here. 985, there it is. That's like you said, folks. It's 985, there it is. <laughs> this is exciting stuff. 15 to go. We need 15 people to subscribe to this channel. Any of you folks out there who've never watched this channel before, you're asking, what the heck is going on with Traveling at Bruce? What is he doing out there? I got Kathy Butler's hitting subs like you can't believe she's hitting retweets. That's why my phone is dingling away on Twitter. It's unbelievable. We're trying to reach 1,000 subs today. We have to hit 1,000 subs today because today is cutoff day. It's deadline day. All YouTubers will be in or out of the monetization program based on their subscriber count and their viewing hours tonight at the end of the day. And I hit the viewing hour requirement two weeks ago, and I have no problem with the views. As you can see, I can talk forever, and we got minutes piling up. It's the subscriber count. I'm a new channel. I started in August. I haven't been doing this for two years. I've been doing this for six months. So in six months, I didn't know back in August that on February the 20th, 2018, I had to have 1,000 subscribers to remain monetized. I was monetized in October when I hit 10,000 views. That was the rule back then. You needed 10,000 views, you became monetized. If you qualified with the right kind of content, the right kind of presentation, all, all I had all I did, nice channel, happy viewers, great interaction between creator and subscribers, all that stuff. Hit 10,000 views, boom, became monetized in October. Didn't make any money in October, didn't make any money in November. That was not the point. The point was I was monetized. It gave me access to other features in the monetization program that YouTube has for creators that are doing this as a uh, an income stream. This is my full-time job. I don't have a day job, this is it. So in December, we hit 100 subscribers. In January, we were hitting 200. And then on January the 20th or so, 17th, 18th, 19th, YouTube came out with a surprise announcement. No advance warning, an email showed up, Boom, they dropped the bomb. You have to have 1,000 subscribers. You have to have 4,000 hours of watch time or you're out and there's no grandfathering in on this deal. You're either in or you're out and you have to have both in the bag. You can't have just the hours. You can't have just the subscribers. You got to have both the subscribers and the minutes. So the panic set in everywhere on the YouTube world. There are 20 million YouTube channels at least that exist there are two and a half million that have a thousand subscribers or more approximately. And there are 17 and a half million that don't. And so I was one of the don't when I got the word at 200 whatever subscribers I had. So I put the word out to all my followers. I said, folks, you gotta help me here. If you can help me out in any way, please subscribe. If you're just watching, please subscribe. It's free to subscribe. Let's see what we can do. And the subscribers started to come. And within the first week, I think I had 150. And a week later, I got another 100, 125. Well, as of yesterday or Saturday afternoon, I was at 830 odd subscribers. And last night at dinner, I hit 900. This morning, I woke up, we were at 910, 915. Just at before I started this telecast, we were at 949. And right now, we seem to be at, let's get the latest update. We are at right now. 987 subscribers, 13 away from hitting 1,000. And I really don't want to go off the air until we do it. <laughs> so if you folks, any of you folks out there know anybody that might be interested in watching this channel, who might find it interesting about cruise ship and travel ideas and tips and that type of thing, please let them know that Bruce with Traveling with Bruce is on the air live right now, begging for subscribers, hoping against hope that we're going to make it and that we're gonna find that we have uh, 1,000 subscribers before the day is done. Because if I don't get it today, the problem will be that I will have to reapply for monetization tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, 
And I have a feeling there are several million of us, maybe hundreds of thousands of channels, this second doing this, trying to find a way to get to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, those of us who are at 700, we're done for. Those of us who are at 800, we're done for. But if we're this close, like I am, we're so close, we should be able to make it. I'd like to get it done sooner rather than later. And then I can hopefully tonight go over 1,000. And if I go to bed tonight with 1,015, I can relax and wake up tomorrow morning and they'll still be there. <laughs> and I won't have gotten kicked off. I won't have, I won't have been demonetized. Okay, who's saying what? We got messages coming in from my from my viewers here. Uh, <clears throat> Sean Johnson saying, "What's your Twitter handle, Bruce? Uh, what is my Twitter handle? It's um, it's um, I don't know. It's uh, I'm traveling with I'm called traveling with Bruce. Uh, Twitter. Let's go to the Twitter thing. I don't want to lose my uh, my place here on this thing. Hang on there, folks. Uh, oh, I don't know if I can get it off of this uh, thing. Uh, where am I at here? Uh, maybe on one of these." Oh my goodness. Uh, traveling with Bruce. Um, let's see if I find it in one of these messages. Uh, traveling with Bruce. Traveling with Bruce. Stand by. I'm looking. Um, uh, at traveling with Bruce, it will, you'll probably find it. If you just put in the search bar, traveling with Bruce, you'll find that there. Then you'll find my page and you'll find the, uh, you'll find the, uh, the, uh, the actual handle that they've given me. Uh, that's what I'm trying to find for you on my phone. I don't know how to do it on my phone. I know how to do it on my computer, but I don't want to screw up this live feed that I'm playing with right now. I really don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. Retweeting. Uh, let's see if anyone else has said anything about my channel. Here we go. Traveling with number one. Traveling with one. The digit one. It's all small letters. Traveling with and then the number one. Digit one. That's the actual handle of my Twitter feed. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope I haven't screwed that up. <laughs> I do the best I can with what little I know. Um, I'm just trying to figure out YouTube, let alone this other stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay, where am I at here? Where did I leave my last messages? Okay. Uh, yes, Debbie says I do thumbs up before I watch. George is saying read read my earlier chat about U.S. staff. Uh, uh, Charles Jordan, I just sent a message to 10 more of my friends. AJ Walsh, Walsh is saying, I strong-armed two more for you. Come on, 15 more. Sean Johnson saying, what's your Twitter handle? I just gave it to you. Heather Young, 986. Gailey S., great stuff, AJ. All my lot have gone to bed now. Heather Young, 987. Heather Young, so close. Pamela Jordan, okay, I'm about to need some meds. This is getting intense. Laugh out loud. Heather Young, 980. Eight. Heather Young, yes, Pamela, I agree. Laugh out loud. Pamela Jordan, we're hanging in there with you. Charles Jordan, all right, we have a Bruce Marathon going on. Gailey S., hi-ha, Pamela, I'm shaking so much. Can't find my mouth to take any. <laughs> can't shake it so much, can't take the meds. <laughs> oh, Gina Wells holds is saying, you only have 12 more to go. You got this. No, I haven't got it. I all the way. I'm trying to get it. We got to get it. Bill Shook was saying, you have some telethon quality people cheering you on during this viewing. This is awesome. Pamela Jordan saying, laugh out loud, Heather and Gailey. Gina Wells is saying, did you used to live in the Cayman Islands? Yes, I did. I used to live in the Cayman Islands. Uh, Scotty Mac Cruises is saying, 12 subs away till the money. Scotty, you got to get on the floor. You got to find somebody for me. We're 12 away. We need 12 more. Help me, buddy. We're almost there. Uh, Heather Young, 990. We're 10 to go, 10 to go. Scotty, Bruce, uh, Bruce Marathon, DN. Oh, the suspense, 10, 10. Everybody check your blood pressure. Hang on, George is saying, hang on. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm loving every minute of it, but it's killing me. This is intense, Kapala saying. Gina Wells saying, that's where I am from, the Cayman Islands. Gina Wells, fantastic. I used to live in West Bay, and uh, I used to live in uh, Lakeshore Villas in West Bay, up on the top end, the north end of the island. And uh, uh, I lived there for a couple of years, but it's a while ago, uh, 90, 1998, 1999 uh, was the two years that I was there with my wife and daughter. And my daughter went to the Cayman Preparatory School with those little blue and white dresses that they would wear. We still have the dress. The girl doesn't fit the dress anymore. The dress is about, you know, what, this big? The girl is all grown up now. Those are great years. Loved it. Loved it there. 
Uh, AJ Walsh, I'm begging for Bruce's subscribe a thon. Subscribe a thon. Charles Jordan, who will be number 1,000? I don't know. I, I know who's it going to be. Um, George McGrower, Marathon, Lelevant, <laughs> Gina Wells. I know. <laughs> Uh, yep, she knows. She knows I know the island. Uh, Pavel Jordan, oh my goodness. Come on, subbies. We need 10 more subbies. Oh my goodness. Come on, subbies. Sean Johnson, Johnson saying, just talk to my wife into jumping on the Bruce subscriber team. Heather Young, 9, 91. Nine to go. Nine to go. Scotty Mac Cruises, don't forget to thank Rowdy Aussie Schools and Poo Scented Ships. What can I say? I, I, I'm just telling you what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Steve Bartley saying the wife is number 990. Thank you, Steve. That's fantastic. Maybe she'll be 1,000. <laughs> Debbie Emanuel, oh, the pressure. Gina Wells, you have two more subs coming from my family. Hurry, Gina, hurry. Sub Mercer now. Wow, come came back to check the numbers. Man, looking at 990. Heather Young, 992. We're eight to go. We got eight to go. We're not getting off until we get to 1,000. We got to get eight more. We're going to do it. This is exciting stuff. Oh, my goodness. I hope the internet stays up. I hope the electricity stays up. I hope we <laughs> we don't want to crash at the system. We just need eight more subs. Oh, we're working on Heather Young is telling me 993, seven to go. Scotty Mac Cruisers is telling me Ozzy Roddy Cruisers, oops, and not schools. <laughs> oh, fun stuff. Scotty, I'm going to ask you, do you like watching uh, Nomadic Fanatic? You watch Eric and Jax? I love those guys. Uh, I follow them all the time. I'm wondering if you're watching them. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, my goodness. It's getting close. Uh, what are we at now? 993. Seven to go. Se Lucky seven. That's it. Lucky seven. That's all we need. Oh, man. Dropping my notes all the time. To think we were at 823 Saturday afternoon. We're at 993. Oh, my gosh. Sir Sherman Mercer, thank you for letting us share in the joy. Heather Young, 994. Six to go. Sticks to go. We're going to have it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen today. This is going to be fantastic. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. I just hope that they don't close at 7 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> I hope they stay open until midnight. I'm sure they will. Scotty McCruises. Yes, Eric is an, in, 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 is an inevitable crook. <laughs> I love him. I love Eric and Jack. I think they're great. I started following them about two years ago. Uh, I think he's as honest as day as long about what he's about. I don't care about what he did in the past. I care what he does now. I like watching his videos. I think it's great. I learned a lot from him, and he's one of my inspiring people to make me do this. Uh, he doesn't. He's never answered any of my uh, messages. I've, I, of course, he doesn't answer many messages because of the kind of messages he gets. But I love watching him, and uh, and I get a kick out of his channel. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, Heather Young, 994. Uh, yes, uh, Heather Young, 995, she's saying. Austin is saying 995. Five to go. Sean Johnson, do you have a party hat and a bottle of champagne ready? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I, have a, uh, I have a couch over here with a recline button on it, and I got a pillow over there, and I'm going to be crashing. <laughs> but I got to post this first. I got to load it up. So I got about a half an hour, 40 minutes of work first. And then I'm going to probably have a dinner, and then I'm going to die. <laughs> Charles Jordan, with the temperatures you have in Canada, now you probably wish you were back in the Cayman Islands. Oh, let me tell you, um, just a bit of history. I lived in Cayman Islands for two years. Uh, loved it. It was really a beautiful place to live. Um, it, there's, there's a condition down there called cabin fever, or island fever, I should say. It's called island fever. If you're on the island for a while, especially if you're an expatriate like like me, all the expats that were in from Britain, from Canada, the U.S., South Africa, from Europe, we'd be on this little island for a while. And after a while, you get this little thing called island, uh, uh, island fever. And you need to get off the island for a while. And so what we would do is on a Friday afternoon, we'd grab an Air American Airlines or a Cayman Airlines jet, a 737, over to Miami. And we'd pop to Miami. And we'd spend Friday night and Saturday night in Miami and come back Sunday afternoon back to the island. Be like a weekend, weekend getaway. In the 1997, 98, it would run us about 110 bucks round trip, 120 bucks round trip, 150 round trip. We'd stay, we'd stay at a you know Motel Six or a Quality Inn or a Holiday Inn or whatever our budget was. And the big shtick was you went to a shopping mall for cheap Chinese food because <laughs> you want you just want to be in part of North America again. You just want to be in big shopping mall because there are no big shopping malls in the Cayman Islands, and you just want to be driving a car on an expressway for a while, and you want to shop at Best Buy to get it 
some electronic stuff. You want to buy some clothes at the mall. You want to go to Costco if you still have a Costco membership or to a Walmart and you get some cheap prices to load up your suitcase with a whole bunch of stuff and you can bring back a thousand bucks duty free every time. And we, that would be the, the run, the weekend run. And you do that maybe every second month or so. And that was the deal on the Cayman Islands. Loved it. But after the islands, after the Cayman Islands, my wife and daughter and I, we ended up living in uh, Palm Springs, California. And we lived there for uh, seven years. And that's where I want to go back to. That's really where I want to go back to. That's got everything I want. It's got the warm, the palm trees, the Costco's, the cheap prices, uh, California, Los Angeles over here, Phoenix over there. There's cruise ships over there, and there's airports everywhere to get you to cruise ships in Florida. And so that would be something for me to, to look at again if I had the chance. Uh, let me just see what we have here. Scotty McCruises, he uses crazy cat ladies to get money. I don't don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. He does, he does right. But that's okay, Scotty. It, it, it's our, it, you know, you don't like him, I like him. It's all right. Crash 3X, five more. That's right, Crash 3X. Belinda, still crossing everything and our toes and our fingers and are crossing my hair. Heather Young, 996, four to go. Scotty is saying, I lived in Singapore, loved it. Oh, Scotty, that had to have been fantastic. Singapore, I've heard such good things about it from expats. That would have been great. Heather, 9 97. We got three to go. Belinda, woohoo! George McCrower. Did you know the the uh, past man jewelers folks in Cayman Islands? Nope, I did not know them. Uh, I did not know any of the retailers. I was in offshore finance but down there. I wasn't in the retail trade, uh, so I don't know those folks. Doreen Chapman, getting excited for you. Gina Wells Holtz, by Island, you mean The Rock. <laughs> the Rock, that's right. The Rock. <laughs> Uh, this is great, Gina. Sean Johnson, the excitement is real. Belinda C, she's got the glasses ready. Paula K, someone get the champagne ready. Sherman Mercer, 997. Pamela Jordan, so exciting and stressful at the same time. Heather Young, 998. Heather Young, 999. We are one away from the big one. Woo wee, so happy to be here when you roll over 1,000. Sherman Mercer, two more tweeting link again. Charles Jordan, you go, Heather. We need one more subscriber. Nine ninety nine. Crash three X has got party whistles going and things going in the air. It looks exciting. Doreen Chapman is clapping. Can't wait. We're on the edge, waiting for it. There it is. Scotty McCruz is saying one thousand subscribers. He's saying it's one thousand. Is he right? Is it really true? Is it really happening? Let's take a look. One. Thousand subscribers, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. Can you believe it? My wife just arrived. She's handing me something. Look at this. A little glass of wine. How about that? Ooh, it's actually, it's her red wine. I'm not a drinker, but, but I'll have a sip. Cheers to all of you out there for helping me get to 1,000 subscribers. I hope I don't get any cancellations. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sean, John, Sean Johnson, you did it. Gailey S. Yay! Crash 3X. Thumbs up everywhere. Heather Parsons. Woohoo! Sean Johnson. Big thumbs up. Betsy Lane. Yeah! Heather Young. 1,000. Paula K. Congratulations. Yay! AJ Waltz. Congratulations, Bruce. Doreen Chapman. Thumbs up everywhere. Gina Wells in the Cayman Islands. You did it! Cindy Barr. Woohoo! Belinda. Big claps. Doreen Chapman. Yay! Pamela Jordan. All right, Bruce. Way to go. Yay! Crash 3X. Shot. Ding! At the end, you did it. AJ Walsh, cheers. George McCrower, kudos. Gina Wells, Holtz, yay. Carol Brown, cheers with gl wine glasses. George McCrower, keep it going for a surplus. Cheers, everybody. I'm having a little sip of my wife's wine, and then I'm turning it back to her. Cheers. Mm, such a vintage. Thank you, my dear. Fantastic. Then I've got the champagne of champagnes, caffeine free Diet Coke. For those of you who like brown fuzzy water with a little burp at the end, cheers on that. Washing down the wine. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Debbie Manuel, 1,000. Oh, happy day. Feel like I did something spectacular. So thrilled you'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. The steaming bean is here. Now remove your shirt for more subs. Not a chance. <laughs> you want to see uh, you want to see me with a shirt on? I'll see you at the steam room on a cruise ship. You'll see you can see it there. <laughs> it's a bit steamy, but you'll see it. Oh man, Gailey, yes, well done, everybody. Uh, lots of uh, lots of high fives, Marat Mongkov. Cheers, Marat. Thanks for that very much. Pamela Jordan. Okay, who's the side guy that back out? Not, not XOL. I don't know. Heather Young. Congratulations, Charles Jordan. I'm only showing 9.99 now. 
Sherman Mercer, raising my Coke Zero to you, Bruce. Congrats. Crystal Johnson, woo Mr. Bruce, well done. Uh, I'm not surprised. It'll fluctuate from time to time. It'll go up. It'll come back. It'll come back. We just have a few more to come in, and we'll pop over it, and we'll stay over it. Right there, I'm at 1,000, still showing 1,000. Oh, my, are we having fun or what? <laughs> uh, I tell you, this is work today. Uh, this is work today. Let me take one more peek at the number and just double, triple check. Uh, showing 999 again. So it'll pop in there. We're going to make it. Unbelievable. What a run this has been. Uh, I've been on the air two hours and eight minutes. I wasn't planning on it, but why not? And I'm um, having fun with this. Yes, folks, any other folks you know that still haven't done it, you just get a hold of them. And uh, let's get them into 1,002, 1,005, 1,010. I'm going to kind of relax when I hit 1,015, 120, 1,020. Somewhere in that range, I'll kind of, okay, because then I know I've got a little bit of overage and we'll kind of kind of go from there. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the steaming bean thinks Putin did it. <laughs> Yeah, Putin Putin and Russia did it. Uh, Gina Wells saying, you have a thousand in about a minute. Pamela Jordan, come on, let's get the cushion now. Doreen Chapman, we need a cushion. Uh, uh, Rui NZ, NZZ, I just subbed for 1,000K. Yay, thank you, Rui. Uh, Gina Wells, another coming from my family. Heather Young, yay, steaming bean. Who is the uh, pencil nut geek that rolled it back? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Heather Young, 1,001. Here we go. AJ Walsh, oh, the drama. Fantastic. Yes, we are getting there. Um, <laughs> Gina Wells is saying he's my son. Way to go, buddy. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Another, another Islander, I'm assuming, that did it. That's fantastic. And uh, we're getting her done. We're going over the magic number, and we're making it happen. 1,001 on my little uh, on my little app there, if you can see it. There it is, 1,001. Fantastic. Uh, and it's it's exciting. It's just so exciting uh, uh, how it's coming together. Um, like I say, I, I would never have thought uh, in the second week of December that uh, I would have either, A, been anywhere near this, but B, that I would had to have been anywhere near this number. That's the thing that really blows me away, that un unbeknownst to me, you would think that the YouTube management would have been in, you know, in committee meetings, serious hush, hush, top secret discussions weeks before they announced the new numbers because they would have looked at all their analytics and they would have figured out, you know, kind of what's the dividing line to sort of separate the real subscriber, real creators from casual creators and also what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, hurdles can we put into place to discourage uh, some of these robot type copyright rule breakers from even trying because we'll be able to catch them before they get to a thousand subscribers. We'll see the we'll see the shenanigans going on on the on the uh, on the postings that they do, or the customer feedback they're getting, or the like dislike ratio. There's all kinds of way YouTube can figure whether the channel is real or or not real, legitimate or not legitimate. And I didn't know uh, if I'd have known in November, or December that this was coming in the second third week of January. They're going to drop the bomb on the whole universe. The YouTube universe, I would have gone, oh, geez, I would have been pretty disheartened. And I would have gone, well, you know, just put your head down and work another four or five months and see what you can do. But uh, like I said, when they did drop the bomb, I was now at 200 and something subscribers, having just grown 100 and, you know, 130 of them in such a short period of time. I thought, well, geez, the channel's showing life. This really has a chance. So I thought, well, let's go for it. Let's not give it, uh, give it a chance to, uh, to rest. Uh, let's go. Steaming Bean, check your stats. Thanks, Gina and son. My wife's account was the 1,000 first time, Peter says. Thank you, Peter, from down under. Uh, Gina Wells, my pleasure. Uh, thank you. The second time, it doesn't matter. Steaming Bean, the last time I had this much fun involved, a blue pill. <laughs> AJ Waltz, uh, Bruce did it with integrity. I'd like to say yes, I think so. I really don't want to do, I didn't want to do the sub for sub game. YouTube is stamping that out all over the place. And uh, God help people who played that game for the last three weeks. I think they're in for a rude awakening. Uh, Kat Katia Simonville. Simonville, you made it. Congratulations. Thank you, Katina. If you're new, thank you for joining in. And uh, we've, we've been working on it for quite a while. This is awesome stuff. Heather Young, deserve it. Pamela Jordan, I'm so very happy for you. Congrats, Bruce. Thank you, Pamela, so very much. 
Uh, we're just padding it now. Hopefully, we're just going to go through 1001 to 1005, 1010, and we'll take it from there. Um, we've uh, we've just got to keep piling it on, and uh, it's going to be great. And again, tomorrow, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if 30 or 40 more come in as normal. And, and uh, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, we might be at 1100. 1150 by the weekend, maybe 1200 by, by the end of next weekend. Uh, that would be just wonderful because it just confirms what I already suspect. When you're doing a couple thousand views, three, 4,000 views in a day, a good YouTuber will do about almost 1%, maybe as much as 1% of the views will turn into subscribers. So 3,000 views, 30 subscribers. 5,000 views, 50 subscribers. That's top end. Be above that is exceptional, unbelievably exceptional. A lot of mature channels, the ones that have been around for a long time, they're at about a third of a percent to a half a percent. So they'll do a thousand views, get uh, instead of 10 subscribers, they'll get five or three. So they do 10,000 a day. They don't get 100, they get 40 to 60, 30 to 50 subscribers, somewhere in that range. But at the moment, my channel is so new that it seems to have that almost a 1% hit, uh, hit rate or conversion rate, I suppose, um, what I'm saying. <clears throat> um, Let's see. Uh, let's see. We're very after happy. I'm just going to check my uh, my uh, number again here on the uh, I think thousand and one. It's sort of stuck there for now. So we'll see if any more come together as the day goes on. But it's been on heck of a ride. Okay. So I think that is going to be it for me. <laughs> uh, two hours, fourteen minutes. I can talk for eight hours. They say uh, I can do this thing for eight hours at a time. Sign out. Come back in and do another eight. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not Jerry Lewis, you know. <laughs> I need like an Ed McMahon sidekick and, and an orchestra and, and uh, IV. <laughs> anyway, thanks for everybody's help today. This has been so much fun, so intense, so rewarding, so unbelievable. Uh, I can't thank all of you enough. I'm just thrilled uh, that we were able to do it. I, I wasn't sure this morning. Uh, I was excited uh, at you know 910 or 12, whatever it was. To think that, oh, we're this close. Uh, but as we came on, uh, as you know, we were at 945, 950, just as we started this telecast two hours and some odd minutes ago. And uh, they just kept coming. They just kept coming. And you folks were were doing what you said you'd do and was hoping you would do and I'm begging you to do. And others stepped up and came in and the subscribers have been coming. And it's fantastic. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> I could be Ed. I'm not sure what steaming bean means by that. Pamela Jordan, I still need the cushion to be comfortable, but it's great. Uh, Gina is saying, have a good night and congrats again. Thanks. Thanks, Gina Welts. Thanks to your uh, brother, uh, son, your son for that. Thank you so much. And anyone else on the island, any islanders out there? I'm a former resident of the Cayman Islands. Uh, and thank you so much for helping this expat get to a thousand. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm pretty sure i'm hopeful you'll enjoy the future videos as we keep going because we love talking about traveling and cruise ships and you name it and if you folks on the island in the caymans have got any cruise ship stories for me i'd love to hear it i'd love to hear about some cruise ship stories what goes on at stingray city some of the shenanigans that you've seen let us know because i know you guys get sometimes 15 20 000 people a day on that rock down there and all kinds of stuff goes on all kinds of i'd love to hear stories from the caymans let me know tomorrow the day after and the day after that that would be fantastic people are saying their good nights and i'm going to say my good nights too gaily s is saying night night bruce thank you gaily it's your bedtime well past go to bed paul okay thanks bruce great show we can all relax now good night debbie emmanuel rest up bruce see you tomorrow i need to go home and relax after such an eventful afternoon so very happy you made it good night thank you debbie palm pamela jordan have a great evening everyone god bless you all thank you pamela crystal johnson's good night i'll see you tomorrow thanks crystal charles jordan take care i'll see everyone tomorrow at five thanks charles heather young what a great show heather young good night everyone sherman mercer see you all tomorrow this is bruce with traveling with bruce saying we made it we hit 1000 subscribers unbelievable but true did it while we were on live just hung around a little longer and it happened i want to thank everyone who subscribed everyone who helped get people subscribed i'm going to get this video posted now onto my channel and hopefully all night long it'll continue on and we'll grow a little more of a cushion here and get into that 1020 1050 range i'm sure we will Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for the thumbs ups today. 
And thanks for the subscriptions. I love it. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. I'll be right back at it 22 hours from now. <laughs> thanks again. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for watching me today. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.